Hey, hey, Gator Nation. What's going on? It's August the 18th. This is your boy, Hirsch, back with the Respect Our Decision podcast. As always, we got Mike. What's going on? And the man, Wes. What's good? Hey, hey guys. We got a real big-time show for y'all tonight and a big-time special guest, Gator legend Ben Troop is in the house with us tonight. Ben, say hey for the folks. Hey, man, what's up, everybody, man? Appreciate y'all fellas having me, man. Man, we appreciate it. This, we've been waiting on this one. Um, guys, as always, you can download us on all your major platforms, Apple Music, Apple Podcasts, Spotify, iHeartRadio, all the major podcast providers. We got you hooked up, man. If y'all want to just go ahead and give us a download, it helps us tremendously. And make sure you give us a, a review and and tell us how we're doing for y'all. And as always, if you'd like to uh, sponsor us and help us as creators, you can find us on Patreon at patreon.com backslash respect our decision. We got some very good exclusive stuff coming for y'all in the future. Can't wait to bring it to you. But without, you know, any other delay, man, let's jump right into it, Ben. Man, we go to... Um, well, how's everything going with you? Everything going good? Everything's good, man. No worries on uh no worries on my end. Uh just doing uh enjoying this media uh life that I do now. Um, you know, I'm not saying let me let me just say this too. You know, I uh, my my uh my podcast that I have 84 reasons. I let me just say I am not competing against respect that decision. I think we all <laughs> I think we all help each other. I think sometimes when people hear, oh Ben, you got yours. So when they see me on yours, it'll be like, oh, baby, yeah, yeah. One hand, watch the other hand. Man. And I think it's too much. Uh, it's too much of a landscape to go around. Thank God y'all do the recruiting. I I cannot keep up with Florida recruiting, man. It changes <laughs> by the minute. All I see is if I see what Billy Billy Napier walking with the little sparklers on each side, saying we got to commit. I try to go to refresh. And then my lady be like, "What the hell are you doing?" I got to put the phone down, right? You know what I mean? It's you know, but I'm, I'm enjoying this, though, man. I will say for man, well, we appreciate it. You know, yeah, man, you know, I keep going with it, though. Keep going. Everyone with it. says, you know, Gator Nation is everywhere, man, and we take care of each other. That's the way it's always been. So, man, we're just gonna jump right into it. You know, like you mentioned, we are a recruiting podcast, so that's generally what we focus on. But you know, we're gonna ask you a little bit of everything. Of course, we got you right. here. But, like, jumping right into it, man, you know, recruiting is a very drastically changed landscape from what it was when you were coming out of Swainsboro, Georgia, and, uh, you know, Augusta, going to high school back in the day. What what was it like being recruited back then by Coach Spurrier and his staff? It was humbling because I didn't go to, um, you know, for disclosure, I didn't go to Elaney High School or ARC. And I went to Butler High School. I wouldn't change it at all. But me, myself, Carlos Rogers, and um, Isaac West, we were the first of our kind as far as, like, big recruits. So us being young and naive really helped us, man. We I, I didn't have a top ten list. I mean, the first time I ever got on the plane, man, was right in Augusta, GA. My first, my, The first team ever gave me a full scholarship was NC State. I had to go up there. My flight left Augusta like 8.30. I got to the airport like 8.20, 8.25. Because I, I already know nothing about no recruiting. So yeah. But the one thing I do appreciate is my coach, my head coach, David Lamb, man. I mean, he wanted the one, he a real one because, you know, I'm thinking he's just, a, I'm thinking he's a great head coach. I didn't realize how much juice he had, how much knowledge he had. And I remember he took me on, a, I went to one uh, camp my whole life. And I was at the University of Georgia and, I, and my parents could not afford it. My mom couldn't afford it. He paid for it. And I remember this is when I realized yeah, it was serious though. I'm 16 at the time. Because I graduated high school when I was 17. I'm there. You're supposed to play two. You're supposed to play an offensive position and a defensive position. So I'm over there with the tight ends, right? They go. So I'm going to run down there with the DNs, linebackers. Coach grabbed me. No, 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 no. You stand here, bro. Like, you ain't going nowhere. Like, they wouldn't let me leave. And <laughs> I was getting recruited heavy by Georgia Tech. Mind you, here come the politics. Georgia Tech coach called me and said, hey, man, you coming to our camp? Nah, coach, I ain't coming. To no I said I ain't going to no camps this year. Mind you, I ain't talk to, I ain't talk to the head man. I look up on the hill the last day of the camp. They go to Georgia Tech coach like this, arms folded, <laughs> like, bro, really? So that's what I kind of realized, man. But I will say this. The momentum of recruiting, it is the lifeblood of college. It is that's it is what makes it go, man. And it's about stockpiling. It's about getting as many – because guys are going to leave. Like, guys are not going to stay, whether through injury, playing time, lies on the recruiting trail. It's a lot of stuff going to make them leave. You got to be able to, you got, so when you start seeing these, and listen, I, I got, man, 
Coach Bray was he's a rock star now. He's a rock star back then. This how you know he a rock star. He do not throw the ball to the tight end. Like he don't. <laughs> and I still went, you know, because yeah. I saw the opportunity. Before this closure, though, you know, Florida had Aaron Walker, love A Walk, ben, Benny Wells, love Benny Wells. Yes, sir. Kurt Wells. Georgia had Jarvis Johnson, Randy McMichael, Ben Watson. I was like, hell no, I'm not going to jail. I want to play. You know yeah, what I'm no saying? Doubt. My mom ain't raised no food. All those guys I, I went pro. The competition, but it's it's you know, I mean, like most kids, man, I ain't never, I ain't never really spent too too much time away from home. So that was so the only reason why I made it to Florida is because I moved to Augusta first. Like having like City Field helped me understand because I ain't gonna make man Swainsboro, Georgia. I know everybody. It Augusta, ain't a big town. <laughs> yeah, man. I mean, I, I mean, they got Cross Creek now in Augusta now, but when I was at Butler, man, we had a thousand kids enrolled on the first day. We had like five. We had about five, six thousand. Kids enrolled there, so mm-hmm. that's about as big as my whole town is. So, but I mean, I wouldn't change nothing. You know how people go, if I can go back, I, man, bro, I wouldn't change nothing because it was an experience, man. I that's did not true. know how big Florida was for this. I did not know how big it was, how engulfing it is, because I did it, man. I get on campus, I'm 17. I walk up in a little gator shop, and I buy a little shirt. Lady got to be 70 years old. She bring me up. And before she give me my bag, she go, how we going to do this year? She like knew who I was. I ain't done nothing. Just got on campus. But, hey, I will say, I know <laughs> we're going to get into it. Billy Napier, this dude understand. He like, look, bro, before I even before I even coach one down, I got to show these people, bro, I can recruit. Yep. I can appreciate Dan Mullen. Dan Mullen gave this much about recruit. That dude ain't care about recruiting because he a great developer. But people say this, bro, if I got a system, and I got the best players running it. You know how much better up, how much easier Absolutely. coaching is. You know what I'm saying? So I, but I do like what he's doing. Every time I see somebody decommit, I look. I say, is he from Florida? Oh hell, we might be trying to. And I know none of these boys. I don't even know Treyon Webb or D Webb because <laughs> I don't know none of these boys. I, mean, I know, I know of Ernest Graham's son. I don't know him. I know yeah. his daddy, but hey, man, Billy Napier knows this. If I'm going from two million to seven point one, I'm going from Louisiana to Gainesville. I better do something. Because you know how we are, we we eighty percent we love him because we got to, but twenty percent of us like uh, we gonna question it. I gotta see it. I gotta see it. We are show me bunch, man. We are always a show me bunch. Absolutely. And he said it day one. It's a talent acquisition business. He didn't shy away from it. So, I mean, he knows what he's getting into. Mike, you got a question for for Ben? Well, I think you you know to go uh, what what Ben was saying. I think he was fired actually by um, you know at least thirty percent of uh, Gator Twitter in June. So, uh, but yeah, so just moving on with a question. Um, what would you say with, you know, you got, had the um, head ball coach, what would you say the major factors in actually brought you to Florida? I mean, you had options, so. Uh, I, I, I look at it like this, you know, you know, my mother and father was there throughout the whole progress, right? There wasn't nobody bigger than him, man. Like he was, it was, at that time, it was two big time coaches. It was Bobby Bowden and it was, and I was just Steve Spurry, right? Well, I'm not going to Tallahassee. Like, like Gainesville, I'm not going on the panhandle. Like, I'm not going that far. But yeah. you got to think, man. It's not even Florida. Once, once, yeah, once I even, <laughs> once, once I even started going through it, I understood, man. This, this is how I knew it was going to be Florida. Full transparency. Every other person come up to me, they call me Ben this, Ben that, Ben this. Hey, Ben, hey, Ben. My name is not Ben. My name is Benjamin, right? Number one. My family calls me Benny. To this day, Steve Spurg is the only one ever called me that, ever. Like, wow. To this day. And to me, it's little stuff, man. Like, make no mistake about it, man. I ain't I ain't made Steve Spurrier not one dollar. I ain't made him more famous or anything, right? But I look at I look at the details, man. If, if a person going out of their way to say, hey man, what's gonna separate me? It's the smallest little thing. Now, now that I'm in media, he still called me that. He will not call me Ben. He still call and he still acknowledges me. Like I so I think that, hey, let's call it, man. Let's call it what it is, man. I want to be a part of that. I see what Florida do. And and I still get to play against Georgia, South Carolina, Tennessee. So it's not like I'm losing anything. South Carolina wanted me just as hard, and Clemson wanted me just as bad as Georgia did. But I'm looking at it as, I'm saying, hmm, Georgia got Hershey Walker. Hell, Hershey Walker, same age my mom and dad. He up there with them, right? Florida had Danny Warfel, Shane Matthews. I get Brock Berlin, Rex Grossman, Chris Lee. I didn't know about the Chris Lee till I got there, but I'm looking at the fact, hey, bro, if I'm going to go to college, at least I'm going to win. Like, I don't know no what's doubt. going on, but at least I'm going to win. And last time, when I was coming out, 
Lou Holtz was at South Carolina. They had lost every game. Not every SEC game. They had every lost game. every game two years in a row. I went to go see them play Clemson. I go to their freaking, uh, uh, quote, awards banquet. And and he he gave out winner certificates. I said, oh, hell no, bro. I don't wanna, I'm, and, and I cannot make this up. I said, wait a minute. You're going to give me a winner certificate? I ain't won a game or two. I said, well, I'm not going to South Carolina. I'm not going. <laughs> and I had to tell Lou Holtz at a basketball game, at, on a visit, underneath the underneath the arena, he's sitting right in front of me. I had to t- I had to listen to him and say, Coach, I ain't coming here, man. Because now my dad told everybody that spoke to us. My dad told UAB, Florida, Florida State, all of them. But it's it's a simple decision, man. Who's the most recognizable? Who got the best brand? And to me, that's Florida, and that's and that's Steve Spurrier. Yes, Jim Downey now. Well, now Jim Downey wanted me at Georgia, but Jim Downey can't beat Florida. But it, like, no, that was a whole different. That was a different era then. It ain't. It ain't 2022 back then. I we, mean, we I, mean I, I give a lot of credit to what Georgia's doing now, but you got to think. You got to think about it like this. Legacy takes a long time, right? Mm-hmm. I will be 40 in September, so it's taken them my whole lifetime to win a to win a natty. All I'm saying is, all I'm saying is, Jim McElwain with the Atlanta, Muschamp with the Atlanta, Mullen with the Atlanta. All I'm saying is I am not taking nothing away from what Georgia has done. I am not. I am not. But if but if but if I got to wait 40 years in between each natty hell, I'm gonna be gone. I'm I'm not gonna see another. So to me, love Georgia, love what they do. I respect them. But bro, Georgia don't want to do this, man. They don't, they don't, they don't come at me because I go all I can control is when I played y'all. Like who you played against? Quincy Carter, David Green, DJ Shockley, Richard, Richard Seymour, Marcus Stroud, lost, 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 lost. So they don't, they don't want to do this. I, <laughs> I, I respect them. I respect them. I respect what Kirby Smart doing. But Kirby Smart knows this. If Florida can get some dudes in there, it's gonna be rough. And he knows that. So he like, I hey mean, let me bridge it. Let me make this gap look bigger. But all I'm gonna say is this: We got to go to Jacksonville. We got to meet him. Sorry, Kirby, we're not going to game. We're not going to Athens. That's ridiculous. We're not going to Athens. <laughs> You know that's, what I'm saying? But, but, I think that's, I think that's, just I gave a segue yeah, that, to a certain member on the <laughs> that's a question I have for you because like he tried to he tried to say I don't want to go to I don't want the game in Jacksonville because we can't recruit. Now the NCAA is saying, hey, you can recruit in Georgia. I don't if you if he's getting top three, top five classes every year, how is that hurting him in recruiting? I, I never got that. So to me that was a lie. So I want to see what he comes with now since the fact that the game is now you can recruit, you can bring you can, you can recruit at the game. So um, how do you feel about that? I I would I don't mind this formula, and you tell me how you feel about this formula as well. If in four years, if if two two is in Jacksonville and then you go to Georgia and have one in Gainesville, that I'm okay with. But to totally remove the game out of Jacksonville to me is is stupid, and and, and I, I don't I never got that. But his mm-hmm. excuse was because he needs to recruit, but you recruiting top three and top five class, which to me was. Uh, Something he just tried to use to, to 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 get the game out of Jacksonville. So how do you feel about that? Uh, he thought he had leverage. He thought, oh, I'm, I'm Kirby <laughs> Smart. I'm I'm hundred million dollar man. No, bro, you ain't got that much juice. And now I will say this though, and, I, and even with what you just said, just say it leave Jacksonville. All right, we can go to Mercedes Benz Stadium. We're not going. To, we're not going to Athens. Like that's not. Now, if they did that, okay. Because at the end of the day, I can. Because look, when Georgia plays, you know. They go play Oregon first game of the year, right? It's gonna be a small patch of green in there, right? There is zero percent chance Florida gonna let Georgia get more tickets. Zero, y'all not getting more tickets than us. So if they want to take it to Mercedes Benz, all right, I can live with that. But it can't have. I don't think people understand. Yo, you guys, hope you guys have been down there. It is something, man. It's certain things are a part of the pageantry of college football. It is bigger than the SEC, Red River rivalry, and the Iron Bowl, and. You know, Ohio State, Michigan, Army, Navy. This stuff is bigger. And to me, right, Kirby knows this. Kirby wanted to be the one. I'm the one that got it out of Jacksonville. No, the hell you won't. No, 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 you did not. And I'm and I'm happy he didn't because it is the most ridiculous thing. What is a greater recruiting uh, weekend than Florida Georgia? Like, there isn't a better recruiting weekend. Now they're going to let recruits come. Okay, I, they should have been doing that, but – Kirby, man, Kirby spoiled as hell. He, he got $100 million. He's coming off another championship. Now I want to move the game. Not happening. I'm happy it's not happening because I was a part of it, man. And sometimes you don't appreciate stuff until you like away from it. Dude, 
they can do a documentary on the tailgating alone. Don't even Absolutely. before you begin the stadium. Yeah. You, you <laughs> out there. That tailgating is, I said, dude. There are certain people who could, they don't even, they are oblivious to what's going on in that state. They drunk. They are done in this. But that's why they changed the name. They don't even make it to kickoff. <laughs> that's why they changed the name of it. Oh, you know they're gonna change the name now. Twenty twenty two. Ain't well. I follow the question. Can't mention that. cocktails. But yeah, yeah, because yeah, they drinking liquor. They drinking liquor right now. <laughs> yeah, there. no ain't doubt. No, <laughs> ain't nothing. That I'll, stuff is crazy. I'll, but uh, I'm happy they're not gonna. I'm, as long as they're not gonna move it, man. Because there are certain things like, and the SEC got a bunch of them games: the Egg Bowl, the Iron Bowl. You know, uh, you know, Florida. These things are bigger than people understand, and it will be weird. Everybody yeah. knows last week, last Saturday in October, in October, it's going to be Florida, Georgia. Now I'm the, I don't know how many, but 2002, that was one of the only night games I was in it in 2000. So, wow. so outside of that, wow. it's going to be three 30. And, uh, I'm just happy they didn't move it, man. it will be so weird. Even if they do now, if somebody, if, if Greg Sankey take my freaking, that's the freaking commissioner <laughs> of the freaking SEC. If they go to, if they go to Mercedes Benz. I'm going to be there documenting it saying, I apologize, Gator fan. I shouldn't have said anything. Here we are. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? But uh, hey, I I don't know, man. I, I could I couldn't imagine it being anywhere else but Jacksonville. And like I said, Jacksonville, the the city of Jacksonville benefits from college teams. Like they they get all yeah. kind of stuff downtown. Uh, Shy Khan, you know Jacksonville owner. As long as they ain't leaving, man, you can do whatever you want. If if Georgia Georgia got more recruits in Florida, that's fine. But as long as it's in Jacksonville. As long as we go out there, you know, beat the hell out of Stetson Bennett this year, because he's getting on my nerves too. I'm a, I'm a, I'm a, I'm gonna be, I'm gonna be happy with the outcome. <laughs> a follow oh, up to love that. that. Oh, oh, my bad, my bad, Hirsch. A, a follow up to that. It. Things have kind of changed over the last, you know, twenty some odd years since you played. Who would you consider, like, as far as uh, the rivalry then and the rivalry now? Because Florida's unique. A lot of people don't yeah. understand as far as we have Miami, we have Florida State, we have. LSU has become really, really predominant as far as a rivalry now. Uh, we have uh, Tennessee is all – I guess that's a rivalry. Yeah. I don't know if you consider Kentucky a rivalry because of the basketball aspect of it. So you have all these teams that we kind of have rivalries with that other teams in – I don't care what conference. we. To me, we have the most rivalry because everybody hates us. We have yeah. a rivalry with just about each and everybody. So how would you – who would you consider back then, like if you could listen in order – uh, those teams I just named, Florida State, Miami, uh, Tennessee, Georgia, uh, even – I don't think Kentucky was even a rivalry back then. Maybe, maybe more yeah. more now, but uh, in, yeah. into now. So I, I, <laughs> put that put in that order for me back then and who would you consider now as far as a rivalry. I know we used I'm to all, play I'm, Auburn a lot back then too. Yeah, I'm, a, I'm always going to say Georgia's number one. And, I, and obviously I'm biased being from Georgia. I think Georgia's number one because – even if this is just moving to even the future, just say when Oklahoma Texas come over and they go into pods, there is 100% guarantee Georgia Florida going to be in the same pod. They're not, we are tied to the hip with these people from Athens. So they, they're number one. For me, number two, I mean, even though it's, I think it's LSU, I, I think Florida and LSU, they don't give it enough credit and credit because this is the thing about Tennessee, man. You got the, you can't lose. What 14, 15 years? Come on, man. Like, I respect Tennessee. I it has respect. to be the record, has to be kind of exactly. close. And, and it's the thing, too. I know, you know, Benny Snell Jr., Josh Allen, and Will Levis and them, you know, uh, you know, Kentucky. I respect Mark Stoops and what he's doing, but for me, it's always gonna be Georgia, LSU, Florida State. Because the thing about Florida State is I'm not a Florida boy, but man, y'all got to see how the team, the guys that's from Florida, they do not like like. I can't stand Georgia. That's just natural. Like that's, a, but it's a guys turning to someone because these guys, you know, high school football in Georgia is like in Florida, man. These guys grew up with each other seven on seven, but they they walking around telling people, and that's my cousin over there, and I'm gonna knock the hell out of it. when I see him. I'm gonna try to, you know. But so for me, it's always gonna be Georgia, LSU, Florida State, and the reason why I say this, I respect rivalries of both teams are winning. Well, I mean, you know, I ain't even finna pile on with Florida State right now. I mean, it, it's rough for them right now. But LSU, man, I mean, since 2000, since 2000, and I just, this is showing them love. They got, they got the second most natties out behind that, behind it, but they won three. You know what I'm saying? Ogeron and Les Miles and obviously Nick said, so I respect that. I respect that. And um, I like genuine, I like teams that genuinely dislike us. Like 
LSU genuinely dislikes us. Georgia genuinely dislikes us. Florida State, and we did, and we can't stand them. I don't. I like a healthy rivalry. Like when Kentucky fans get to talking, I'd be like, please stop it now. Like just please stop this. Like come on. Like I get it. If they beat us, they beat us. I, I, I get it. I get it. But do you think Florida gonna not have you know eleven guys on defense if it's fourth down? No, nope. that's not gonna happen. And do you do you think that our basketball coach? You know, do you think our basketball coach Golden gonna say this is a basketball school? And guess what? We're the only team went back back to back natties. So yeah, it's always gonna be Georgia, always gonna be LSU, always gonna be Florida State. And you know, if Tennessee want to come to the party, man, if they want to make this thing, you know, Coach Hypel and Hendon Hooker and them, if they want to show up to the party, let's do it. But until proven otherwise, Joshua Dobbs ain't running out that locker room. We're gonna see Hendon Hooker. We're gonna see, you know. So uh, I respect I respect all of them. But you know, when I was in college, Auburn was was big, but they've kind of gotten away from Auburn. Auburn is more Georgia now. But hey, man, if yo if yo uh, if yo uh, Western crossover every year is LSU, we ain't getting no cakewalk seasons now. So say what you want about Florida, our season. Look at our schedule compared to them boys' Mathis. That's all I'm gonna say. Look at ours and look at theirs, and, and you tell me who's coming off a national championship. Yep. Real quick on that. Um... There's, always, there's been a constant debate. Um, I don't consider them a true rival because we don't play them annually like you were, we were just talking about. But what about Miami? And uh, if you do consider Miami rival, Miami to Florida State. Uh, then and now, of course. I, I, I will say this. Yes, for one, for, one, for one reason only. They're part of the big three in the state of Florida. It's Florida, Florida State, Miami. So, yes. But I will say this, though. And I know my Miami, former Miami guys, Miami naive as hell now. Like Miami, be, I don't. Miami sees something nobody else sees. I mean, I remember a couple of years Delusion. ago, Clint, Clint Portis and 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 uh, Jared Payton and them boys calling me. Hey, true, you want to put some money up, bro? I don't, I don't want to take your money, G. Why? Because I've been. Have you been watching what I've been watching? This ain't this ain't two thousand one and two. And this ain't Miami thirty for thirty now. This <laughs> this ain't that. I'm serious, and, and I will say this: I want the you to be the you, but. Something it's man, Ed Reed's on the staff. I mean, what the uh, the D line coach is um, is um, Jason Taylor. Jason Taylor. Think about that, don't matter. I love Jason Taylor, he ain't a better coach than uh, than uh, Sean Spencer. He, he's not, he, he's a Hall of Famer, but he's a better coach. Corey There's Raymond, a difference in playing and coaching, yes. And the thing about it is, Derek Wingo got coached by Jason Taylor in high school. Where he playing at, Florida. He could he could have stayed down there. No, nope. <laughs> so all I'm saying is Miami needs to be good, but until you even go to Charlotte, that's the ace. That's what the ACC championship is for yep. those you don't know. Please don't talk to me. Come on, man. Y'all, y'all got what? What? what Derek King goes down there. Uh, you know, Tate Martin. Oh, everybody. I'm just like every hey. year they back. Oh, I mean, y'all got both of y'all <laughs> defensive ends going first round and all this other type of stuff. I'm just like this. I mean, <laughs> yeah, because, because, because and the reason why I said is this. Now the fans gonna talk trash, but I'm like, have they been watching what I've been? Didn't y'all go to a bowl game and get shut out? Please don't do this, Miami. Like, come on. And I love Jonathan Vilma. I love you know DJ Williams and those guys that you know, uh, you know Shocky and all those dudes. Dan, y'all done had David and Joku, Shocky. What? Um, all these guys. It don't matter, man. They gonna have to. This is just me. Can you beat Clemson? No. And just go ahead and put out that no. Can you be Florida? Well, we'll see when we play y'all again because y'all didn't because all that. And I was, I was at that game. Now I was up there, bro. I seen Michael Irvin and and uh, Adrian James and and uh, and uh, uh, Clinton Portis. Clinton Portis walked by me, clean shaven. I shook his hand. See people like true, true. You ain't want to bet me. I said, listen. I said, you ever seen the great white hype? Like, yeah. What the real, the real, the real Florida? That's out there. That stuff you talking about, bro. Y'all can't help them. Y'all like y'all finna strap it up. Y'all. And when they got beat, they was like, and uh, what's his name? DJ Dallas. Oh, DJ Dallas from where I'm, well, you know, he from around where I'm staying at now in GA. DJ, I called DJ. He said, Troop, if they would have kept giving me the ball, we would have won. I said, but they didn't. And you lost. <laughs> so we'll see you another time. Now, nah, but it is a rival though. Miami, Miami and Florida State. U, UCF, please. P please, please. USF, F A U F I U, stop it. I respect y'all. But UCF really think y'all on the same level as Florida. Y'all got to y'all mm, don't get me big, started. Man. The Roman is big. Nice jerseys. Love the jersey combination. But uh, I love the jersey combination. But 
We'll we'll see y'all in the future. Y'all will get a chance to yeah. They 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 still go down that road. They they they'll get they get sensitive. They still yeah. heated because of what what Scott Strickland did. Hey man, except that you don't get to dictate terms. We have real national championships in Florida. Y'all have <laughs> Mickey Mouse now. I don't even know what that is. Like I don't even know what that is. Y'all had a parade. That's embarrassing. That that is oh my good. <laughs> ben, let me shift gears on you real quick. I, there was a tweet the other day and um. I responded to it, and you had ultimately retweeted me on it, talking about who the biggest Heisman snub was in history. And I said Rex Grossman, and you said without a doubt, obviously, and you said you were biased, but, man, talk to us a minute for about Rex. What was it like catching passes playing with Rex Grossman? Rex was that dude, man. He he, Rex was a gunslinger. And I will say this, and nothing against Eric Crouch. Listen, he won it. I, get, I, I ain't mad at him. Man, I'm averaging 300 yards a game in the SEC. 300 with those defenses. But yeah, defenses was good back then, too. And I'm averaging 300 yards. Brock Berlin, our backup, had more touchdown passes that year than Eric Cross did. But he obviously he was running the high. I mean, he was running the option and stuff. But come on, man. Let's 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 stop playing. I mean, Rex Grossman, no one thought that he would become what he became when he got to Florida, right? No, no, no one saw that. He had to beat out Jesse Palmer. Um, I think uh, Brock Berlin ended up in Miami, right? Because he, yeah. he was at, yeah, he I, and I could be wrong, but I think he still got the record for most completions in a Georgia game. I mean, did you did you see the orange? Did you see the Orange Bowl in two thousand one? Well, Taylor Jacobs was player of the game. He only played the first half. Who was throwing him rock? That would be man. That man. They need to. They, I, that's when I realized, though, I didn't realize the biases when it came to Florida quarterbacks. I didn't realize how bad it is. But look, look at, I mean, uh, you know, you, you start talking about, um, um, I can't even think of the kid, uh, the kid that played that a couple of years ago that's down there in Tampa. His name is uh, the, the, uh, the, the freaking quarterback. That did Kyle Trask. Kyle Trash. Trash. Look, look, look at how they did him. All I'm going to say is, I'm not saying Rex is the only snub, because I've seen some snubs, like, you know, Vince Young and you know, uh, Peter Warwick. I've seen some snub. Big time. But Rex did his thing, bro. And, yes, I'm out there with him, but it's almost like uh, we thought he was going to win it. Like, I thought Rex was going to win it. And when they said Eric Crouch, I'm like, Eric Crouch? Eric Crouch was – he looking, too. He look around, too. He like, hey, I know they finna call Rex. Like, they call me. <laughs> Say psych. <laughs> you know what Say I'm saying? Psych. But, but at the same time, I think it's, I think it should be at least four. Um Statues out front. I think Rex should be one of them. The Kyle Traz had a hell of a season. If he would have won, I wouldn't have been surprised. But you see how hard it is for a Florida quarterback. Look at what Tim Tebow had to do. Everything because mm-hmm. if he's just throwing passes, it he don't win it. This and, boy then got, got, and then got know? cheated out of it in his better year. Man, yeah. at, the, at the end of at the end of the day, Tim Tebow got more rushing touchdowns than than, than Herschel Walker. Absolutely. <laughs> And, and he had, so he, he he got to be a superhero to even win the thing, right? So <laughs> hey, and and, and, I, and I don't care what Auburn say. I take credit for Cam. Cam started off at Florida, then he ended up. I don't even want to know what would have happened if Cam would have got to be the backup. You know? oh that's God, a big what if. That's a I huge what if in history. That's a story for that's for another. Hey, we taught him how to throw. <laughs> I mean, it may have been a laptop, but we taught him how to throw. <laughs> ben, let me Speaking ask you. Let me ask you a segue question Wait, on that yeah. real quick. Who's a better passer, Steve McNair or Rex Grossman? <sighs> Whoa. <laughs> <laughs> uh, we got we got a stumper. I'm gonna yeah, go Steve Mac. I'm 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 I'm, I'm gonna go Steve Mac, and this is why. Rex got that zip, man. That thing come like Tyrone Calico, who got drafted in 2003, second round pick in Tennessee. He said, when I when I got there in 2004, he said, boy, when I was at the combine, when Rex Gross and step up there to throw, we fight each other. He said, dude, you come out of your route, and that thing is right there. Mm-hmm. This is how great Steven there is. If it's, if it's a defender on the inside, inside of me and the outside of me, he's going to put it right there. Like, I'm going to catch it, and the defender ain't even seen it. I ain't never – Rex, wow. the best – listen, the best to me, right, the best, the prettiest ball I've ever caught came from Chris Lee. Anybody can catch it. Beautiful, man. The best, the, the most zip, that that's that's Rex. But as far as like like throwing that thing, oh man, you can't do it better than Stevie Mac. Man, we we made up a route against uh Seattle. We just made up on the fly. <laughs> I didn't run it right the first time. Listen, I didn't run it right. Check this out. This is how good of a player he is. I didn't run it right. So he looked at me and he didn't even 
we get to the sideline. He said, hey, four man, I got you, man. You got to, you know, so we do it again. We, we run it again, right? He said, be patient. Listen, this time I'm so patient. I'm like, oh, man, I'm covered, man. He dropped it right there. It's like wow. Matt could do it, man. He's the, be- he's the best football player I've ever played with, bar none. That's And that's saying something with some guys I played with. But Matt could do it, man. I mean, Alcorn State, third overall pick to the Houston Tech. Te- I, mean, I mean, the Houston Oilers. Oilers time. Yeah. I was co- – let me tell you something, bro. I'm co- co-MVP with Peyton Man. Please give it to Stevie Mac. Co-MVP this guy right here with Tennessee. But I but yeah, Mac Mac is Mac is the most but the most gifted, like just gifts. Man, Chris Lee, when he first got there, he kept rolling to the right, rolling to the right, throwing it, rolling to the right, throwing it, rolling to the right, throwing it. We out there just doing our own seven on seven, like a player's only seven on seven. So we messing with him. So somebody go, dude, with Independence High School, Charlotte, are you supposed to be this dude? What make you that dude? He rolls to the left, he throws it with his left. By, by 40. Wow. With his left. And we go, he goes, that's just the case. He said, so he said, that's so y'all know if my right shoulder get hurt, we can still do the offense. <laughs> wow. he, 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 after that, he was like, you know what I'm saying? I mean, mind you, he didn't have to do that. I ain't think he was gonna do that, but I was like, did you just throw? I've said constantly, I think Chris Leak is maybe the most underappreciated Florida Gator yeah. in history. Yeah. He Speaking of, I, I ain't had, I ain't seen, I ain't seen him since. Obviously, our playing days, but Urban Meyer is so lucky from that 2003 class, man. Because what he wanted when the 2006, it was, it was a blend. Zook left him a nice cupboard of, of man, yeah. listen, man, with Dallas Baker, huh? Chris Lee, Caldwell, and, and mind you, and that's how you know uh, Andre Caldwell. Now, mind you, that's what you want. You want a blend of you know older guys and younger dudes, but. Chris Leak, boy, that boy could do it, man. I, I told Chris, man, I said, man, they're going to – I said, he – he, from what they criticize quarterbacks now is what they use against him because he wasn't fast. He like, you know, he wasn't – he could throw that rock, though. Hey, man, I was – hey, all I know is how many true freshmen you know they first start in their life is against LSU on the road? How many you know? So that year that LSU won it, they lost one game that year to a freshman. And <laughs> – what I had to learn my senior year, because my senior year was his freshman year, Zook used to tell me, bro, you got to protect them, man. What? Protect them. So so I, I used to look at I, I, I used to say, I said, listen. I said, one, two, man. I said, listen, man, we're going to be that one, two punch, right? I said, you decide. You, so I would tell him. He said, Troop, if I even see your numbers flash, I'm throwing it to you. And he was dead serious, too. If he even see a half of an eight, he's throwing it. Because we play in South Carolina. And when he threw it, mind you, I'm still running this way. So when he threw it, I'm like, who are he throwing that to? And I'm, <laughs> and I, but I don't see nobody. And what happens is when he threw it, it's like I had to, all this happening. I catch it, and both of the safeties about to converge on me. They're about to knock me out. But I was able to catch it and kind of run around the safety. I jump up and point to him, but I'm looking at him like, boy, if you ever throw a route like but, but, <laughs> but, but that's football, man. I think football yeah. is – I think I think everything he needed to be as a football player, he learned as a freshman. So when he came a sophomore and he was ready, like it, you you got to have you got to have no ego in you to deal with Tim Tebow. That's the chosen one, man. And you knew he was gonna be. Just imagine if he wasn't a senior and Tim T, like if him and Tim Tebow both juniors, Tim Tebow's gonna play. So I'm happy that it played out the way it did. That both guys get their own legacy like that. But it's a lot of stuff that that Chris Lee, man. He was, man. We played. When we played Georgia, and he threw me one, he threw me one on the sideline, but the guy was gonna hook my arm. Like, so he said, Hey man, they're gonna hook his arm. So I told him, I'm gonna catch you one, I'm gonna catch you one hand in. He hooked my I'm just saying this casually. I'm gonna catch you one arm, I'm gonna catch you one hand. We called a play, I'm on the backside, that go to safety, and he hooks my arm. Chris Lee, he throws it, and I'm literally running with one arm. I threw my arm out as far as I could. That ball stuck, it stuck like on my <laughs> and, and, and at the same time, man, I just enjoyed the hell out of it, man. I mean, a lot of time people look at the player you became. I said, bro, look who I play with. I like, like, look at these dudes. You know what I'm saying? I'm like, I get the benefit, but Chris That's Lee, right. Chris Lee was that guy, man. He was he, he don't he he didn't throw it as hard as Rex. But boy, that ball was pretty. I mean, when Chris Lee throw a football, it looked like a big gigantic Nerf ball. You can't drop it. <laughs> you can't, and you just. But I I appreciate I appreciate the fact that I got to play with that dude, him Jesse. Engel Martin, uh, Rex Grossman. I play with a lot of dudes. And, uh, hey, man, I you know, wish we would have won a natty. But as long as – listen, as, I, I mean, 2021 aside, as long as Georgia and Florida State ain't winning natties, 
I'm good because I, I I have to deal with those fan bases, man, and they, you know, they getting on my nerves. Who would you say? And since we're talking about you know the, the guys that you play with, who would you say offensive, defensive? Only one guy from each side. I'm gonna give you. I'm, I'm, I'm not gonna put just one guy from each mm-hmm. side of the ball. Who say the best? I, I wanted to ask about Taylor Jacobs. Uh, Taylor J. And, yeah, but those guys. But who's the best guy that you played with on offense and defense? Like that just was special that you saw. Like God, nobody can do what that guy is doing. Uh on offense, nobody could do what that guy could do. Uh wow, ooh, ooh. Ernest Graham. Ernest Graham was nice. Listen to me. Listen, e- EG had a stiff arm that he wouldn't stiff arm his teammates. So in practice, he wouldn't stiff arm. Them. Like <laughs> EG was, he was so he was such a a slippery back. Like EG, he wasn't a fast dude, but he was like you know short. He built like a fullback, like ripped up, but he could run that thing. Man, EG was, but I man, see you gonna make me pick, man. God dang it. On, on defense, though, we will respect your decision. On defense, I gotta say it, man. On defense, like the most instinctual player I've ever seen, Kiwan Ratliff was so man. Rat. He was so like this is the thing about Kiwan, right? This is what y'all don't remember. Kiwan used to play safety, and they realized there was a play in the our freshman year. He had to play safety in the in the uh, uh, SC championship game. There's a play that he backpedals out the out the screen. He never comes back. Like I'm not coming up. I'm not. <laughs> I don't hit people. The reason why I could have picked a lot of people, man, because you know I played with Gus Scott, Lito Shepard, Alex Brown. It's a bunch of guys. Yeah. But this is what makes this is what makes Kiwan Kiwan. We play in Arkansas, and he's playing off, letting the receivers catch the ball in front of him. So Matt Jones thinking, oh, this dude ain't all that. He ain't all that. Second half, they go the first pick. All right. Then they go another pick. Then he caught the third pick, scored, and threw it in the stands. I said, this boy just threw it in the upper deck. <laughs> I, and I'm just talking about just natural. I mean, Alex Brown is incredible, man. I mean, you know what I'm saying? Uh, Kenyatta Walker. It's too many guys. But for me, I ain't never seen. I ain't never seen nothing at corner like Lido Shepard. As far as like his just straight ability, just nasty. But Le- but Kiwan ain't fast. Kiwan ain't big. But Kiwan is instinctual. I ain't never seen nothing that safety like Gus Scott. Gus Scott let a, let a, let. I played with Cooper Wallace that went to Aub- Auburn. And this is no lie. Cooper running down the field on the seam route. He think he wide open. Gus Scott runs up to him. He grabs his left arm and pulls him. Because when you pull somebody, it's exposed right, and he just popped the ball out. That's all he did. Yep. And when he comes to the Titans, no lie, he comes to the Titans, and he tells me, hey, Troop, man, we played y'all in 2002. Gus Scott, when he popped the ball out, and he, he popped the ball out, and y'all got the fumble recovery, he looks at me and says, quote, man, you a white tight end. Man, you don't get out of here. And where's off the field? This is, the, this is what he told me, right? So, I, it was, but t- but it was too many guys. Jabbar Gaffney, man, him and Reshay and Taylor. Ooh. That I mean, listen, they ain't Ike Redell, you know, and Quesi, but they was close. That's they real close. Them three. They wasn't them three, but it was Taylor a brand Gaffney, new three. They were they were special in their own. They right. they, they wasn't Quesi and them boys. That's they wasn't them ninety six boys. But I'm telling you, dude. I mean, I I was man to even be able to be noticed with all that talent around you, it's hard, bro. It's 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 it's, it's a blessing when I look back on it because you go to the practice field and you see all this talent that go Thaddeus Bullock, aka Titus O'Neill, with a thong on, showing off his eight pack. You know what I'm saying? He's out there. I, now he never played. He never he looked. Let's love love that. He never played, but that's intimidating. You walk on the field. And I'm like, why my body don't look like that? Like, how he get like that? that like, Titus hey. is a whole nother beast, man. That's that's my dream. That's one of my dream interviews because I'm a huge oh, wrestling hey, fan. Man, no, he, he's a he's a he used to he's a, he's the only player that commits practice to set up events. Coaches say, oh, Thad, we went to a Snoop Dogg concert in the old dome. Snoop got on a '90s jersey with Thad bullet on, with bullet on the back. I said, how the hell he do that? So I so I knew he was destined for greatness, man. What he's doing now. Hey man, he got schools named after him in Tampa. He's, he's a, he's he's a, a special he's a human being, man. Yes, yes. Well, uh, before we get too far away from uh, Rex, Rex Grossman, if you're allowed to, um, what's no. your um, craziest uh, Rex Grossman story? <laughs> I've, uh, the, the legend that we can Rex. say on the air. Yeah. Uh, okay. <laughs> that, that, if you can't, I, understand. I, but, no, no, no. Like, so, have to ask. so, so I didn't. I didn't spend a lot of time with Rex away from football. Like I only. I don't know where Rex lives. I see him on the field. Yeah, but 
you know, we, you know, we used to go to, you know, we used to go to a certain supermarket. I would not, I'm teaching y'all boys something to only say people's names that people give you money. So I'm not going to give them any free pub on here. But I go up in there one day and this girl goes, you play for the time? And she said, you play for the Gators. Like, yeah, she says, Rex Gross was in here the other day and he was buying all this alcohol and he was, and he was drunk. We had to help him to the car. I said, what? <laughs> That she sounds old yeah, brand no. right there. And, 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 and so if you, obviously, if you get a bunch of tickets on campus, they'll tow your car. But Rex had an Escalade on 20s. I, 20s are very small now. They was, they was the biggest Rams out then. He would park in the handicaps. He would park, like, right up front. And he would get towed. And he we would get down and pray. He'd say, hey, man, can one of y'all trainers run me over to the – I don't know how much bread he gave Florida from getting towed. But he he gave him a lot. Like like Rex, I think he lived real close to campus. So we got to be, you know, in the meeting room at I don't know two o'clock. He's pulling up at like one fifty, right there up front, running downstairs. Cause I used to be like, what else? Like coaches don't get, got no flair. I said, dude, what was it? Had to be what it was two thousand. Had to hit two thousand two on them things. Leather. That I don't, well, navigation wasn't a thing then. But yeah, it was outside, and the girl was telling me. She said, she said, I knew it was him. She said, I said, well, how did he pay for it? She said, he gave me a whole bunch of money. And, and she said, he gave me a whole bunch of money. And I took the money that was, I held him to his car. She says, he does it like every other week. He'll stumble up oh, in here goodness. and he'll just fill up the freaking basket full of freaking beer and stuff. I said, well, man, I said, he's a starting quarterback with Florida here. That's that they should just give it to him. The kind of stuff, the kind of stress he's under. So no I doubt. used to get that all the time though. Rex was. Rex was cool, man. Rex, Rex, Rex was cool as a fan, bro. He, I didn't, like I said, I didn't know him, know him because I didn't hang out with him away from him. But yeah, the lady wanted to make sure because I, because I, I guess because I'm, I'm up there with my Gatorade and water. She was like, well, why don't Rex drink Gatorade? And I said, well, he drank it when I see him. When I, every time I see him, he drank. But at home, that's a, that's a, that's a different story, I guess. <laughs> and to follow that up real quick before we get too far, straight too far away from it, um, obviously the coaching changes are uh, tough for everyone. So how would you uh, describe the, uh, the transition from Spurrier to Zook, and then not only for you, but as a team as a whole? It was confusing because we had just won the Orange Bowl, and me and Kenny Parker was driving up um, I-95, headed back home, and we started breaking news. He going to he going to, uh, to the Den Washington Redskins. And uh, it's confusing because we're, we as players, we aren't a part of the hiring process. They don't ask us anything. So y'all get the news, know, we get the news. So when y'all and it's the thing, right? When Ron Zook got hired, he we was in the weight room. It was weird, like we was in the weight room, and he keep looking at me, and I'm looking at him, and it, and it, and, it, and it dawned on me like five minutes. In, I said, "Oh hell, that's the that's the new head coach right there. Like that's him." And he told me later on, <laughs> he told me later on, he thought I was a recruit. He thinking, "How the hell this recruit get in here?" And I'm looking at him like, "Well, I'm looking at you like, how the hell you get in here?" Like I we didn't know each other, right? We didn't know each other, but. I will say this, man. I don't know what type of player I, be I, come, I become with Spurrier. I do not become the player I become with Isaac. Ain't no way. Because, man, you need certain coaches. Ron Zook is not a better he, – he, he ain't a better coach than Spurrier. Ain't too many people that's ever going to coach better than him. But as far as, like, what you need individually as a player, man, he nice, bro, because he, he's demanding. Like, he ain't with that – let you get by with stuff. No, bro, he on everybody from the coaches, players, administrative staff, trainers, equipment men. I, everybody was on their toes, man. Because you got to think they could have called anybody. Florida can call anybody. Come on now, they call him. So for me, I needed him. I needed him. I didn't know how bad I needed him, but when I start seeing me becoming better as a player, because a lot of times you don't see it, man. You just out there playing every day. And then it's our first game my senior year. That's when ABC Sports had the biggest game of the they, That's when ABC Sports had the biggest game of the week. That go Lynn Swan, Hall of Fame Pittsburgh, still a Lynn Swan, walking up to me, telling me he's looking forward to watching me play. That's all Zook, man. Zook, no lie. I got coached on the Spurrier two times. We get done with our spring game my senior year. We at we go to, we walk down to um to the dorm rooms eating food. That goes Zook. Right there with us. Like. He had to listen. He really at the family barbecue. Spurry would have never done that. <laughs> and I'm not. And I'm not saying Spurry didn't want to do it, but Spurry was so big yeah. he couldn't do regular stuff. Ron, they said Ron Zook went up in the frat house trying to fight the. Frat. I would have. I was already in the NFL. I would have loved that. He would have came as a troop. Let's go fight the frat boys. Hell yeah! By the time let's go. Whoop me, boy. Let's go do it. <laughs> right? But I, I th 
Zook, 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 to me, recruits like Billy Napier does. That's how they – you see how they recruit? His personality seems a lot like Zook, uh, Billy's does. Yeah, being yeah, yeah, yeah. So, yeah you, you see how Shane Beamer did the little TikTok thing? Zook ain't doing that. Zook used to we used to, we used to we used to mess with him all the time. We used to say, listen, man, you need to go to the booty store and get you some booty come back. Cause your where your booty at, bro? Like you got all these shorts, like the store goes straight <laughs> down. Not saying we checking them out or anything. I said, I'm scared to tap you on the booty, man. You might have to go to the hospital. Where your booty at, bro? Like, Siri, you need to do some squats. But at the end of the day, man, he he was I love him to death now, man. He I'm in the bowl game because, mind you, listen, fellas, I don't care about no SECs, I don't care about no John Mackey Wars, all of that's cool. I'll take it, but I didn't even know I was all American until I went to the bowl game. I'm sick as a dog. And Spurgis, I mean, I look say you're gonna be the first ever first in all American, don't even play in the bowl game. I go, what you say? I said, I'm all I ain't even know because I don't look at lists. These boys now they checking every time. Man, they only gave me a four star. I'm a five. I don't, can you play football, bro? If you can play football, let's do it. But Zook was cool, man. He was hard to deal with. He was we was in the south end zone taking pictures for picture day, and his wife was supposed to take a picture with us. And she was in the other end zone. And the pitcher guy goes, are you ready to look? He goes, wait a minute, where my wife at? And we look 100 yards that way, and his wife is there. I think she had, like, a white dress, heels, in 100-degree heat. He said, hurry up. She runs. <laughs> oh, she runs 100 yards to us. Then he told her, you better not cry. Your makeup better not run. That's what he told her. You better not cry. Your makeup better not be running. And we looking like. How the hell her makeup? It's a, and listen, that makeup didn't move. That makeup did not move. We was like, he told the cameraman, take the picture. We stand here like this, man. <laughs> he was that dude, man. He, but he also lost to Mississippi State. At Miss, you can't can't keep your job like that, bro. So I miss him. I, I wish him nothing, but I think he's um, I think in the XFL now, up there with Coach Loxley, uh, wherever he is. But he's man, that man made millions of dollars, man. He ain't went Florida Pot is still paying him, bro. He he he, he and Illinois. He he good. He good. I'm gonna ask you, uh, Ben. Uh, two, I got two last questions for you. Uh, the first one is, uh, how do you feel about NIL and the transfer portal? Uh, how did, what's your take on that? On I think NIL. Things? I think NIL took too long, and not not even for me. I don't care nothing about it. But fellas, y'all gotta understand this. It's 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 more it's more it's more perception than reality. Yes, I have a shot to make money with my name in like this, but. If NIL is supposed to be college athletics, if everybody ain't benefited, don't tell me about, you know, the Addison kid that went from Pitt to U.S. He's the, he's the one to blend the cough. He's the number one. Hey, man, uh, C.J. Stroud got this, and, and B.J., uh, uh, the, the running back with Texas, and, uh, and uh, oh, man, you know um, Arch Arch Manning. Man, what about the dude that you don't know that, that plays every day? Or what about, you know, uh, the swimmer that happens to be a woman? That you, I'm nil to me while it while it is working, it's not working, and I, I and the reason why I said is this: give me a give me a base, like give me a hey man, give me um, why well, it's got to be money all the time. What I hear in nil is free stuff. It's too many it's too many companies out there to not give stuff away. What about giving everybody a two hundred fifty dollar gift card to whatever supermarket that sponsors the team? Uh, whatever apparel company with Jumpman, give me a two hundred dollar gift card to get me something from Jumpman every every day. Why? Give me um, hey, my lady always asking me, I want to go to the movies. Well, you better get a job because I ain't got no money, right? Yeah. So why don't I go to AMC or whatever? And we the, listen, these are things that they can give out for free yeah. for every athlete. That way, before we even start, I expect Anthony Richardson to get two cards. He's Anthony Richardson, started quarterback <laughs> in Florida, right? Like these, yeah. this some of this stuff is just laughable. And the thing about the transfer portal is this: talk to me about the transfer portal when coaches have to suffer when they sign six year deals and leave that next year. Agreed. No one says Absolutely. a word to these coaches, right? Absolutely. Like when uh, Lincoln Riley goes to USC, talking about and he leaves said all those kids USC. in the lurch. <laughs> yeah, and an Oklahoma kid said, "You told us that last week. You told us the same thing." Or yeah. When Bob Stoops knew he was leaving Oklahoma and Lincoln Riley was going to be the head coach, so they still go and get their recruits, get them in the building, then he quits. Hey, man, work with the dude. That is nonsense. So transfer portal, listen, if I go to a school and I don't want to be there no more, man, I, I should be able to go somewhere else. Yeah. Like, you know, and, and so – but I do think NIL has a shot to be really, really good. It's going to – yeah, it's going to benefit the powers that be. I get it. But HBCUs, man, NAIA, uh, 
Division two, division three. Everybody should be able to get something. People go, well, Ben, what is something? Figure it out. Figure out what the something is because you got to establish a floor. You know, figure out. Listen, at the end of the day, and I know this, there are people that don't want to be rich. They just don't want to suffer financially. You can find that's a medium you can fill in, right? Or if I got $200 to a supermarket and my mom, because you know, because most of them are going to get sent home. Hey, I send it to my people. Why? Because I'm still getting free lunch. You know what I'm saying? It's not like that. It's Especially like when you look at when you look at the Big Ten today, I think they signed a seven billion. Seven, yeah, ain't no, yeah, ain't no money Not though. Me. Ain't no money. Ain't yeah, no money. seven billion dollar TV deal today. So there's no I, money I though. There, 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 there's <laughs> no money. People are crying broke. Get out of here. So you know, if they got seven million, what you think the SEC gonna get? More than exactly. seven million from ESPN. Yeah, they about to get a boatload. <laughs> they just got they got rid of the uh, Texas the Longhorn Network as well. As well so mm-hmm. let me you ask you. Yeah, mm-hmm. My last question for you: um, What would you consider consider a successful season? I mean, we have a hard schedule, but what would you consider a successful season for Florida this year, record wise? Or uh, maybe it doesn't have to be record wise, but performance wise. Because sometimes we can look yeah. good on the field and still have some tough losses. So, what would you, in your words, I don't want to put words in your mouth. So, I'm just, what do you consider a successful season for Florida? Uh, sure. j- just being honest, because I know how rough it's going to be. Going, listen, going up in the Kyle Field and winning, like going to Texas and and winning because it's, it's it's about certain games, right? Um, You know, telling Brian Kelly you're going to have to earn everything you get in the SEC. I know you came over from Notre Dame, and I ain't naive, man. Them Georgia boys are rough. You got to be competitive in Jacksonville. Like, you got to be competitive. It can't be what it was last year. Yeah, 42-7's got to be out the window. It can't be. And my thing is this. You finish second in the East. You win at Kyle Field, you beat LSU. I think we're gonna do. I think we're gonna. I'm a, I think we're gonna do well against Kentucky. And the usual suspects, right? And I think that's a successful season because if anything, Dan Muller put a lot of pressure on Billy Nate because people expect New Year's Six. Uh uh uh. New Year's Six Bowl, back to back New Year's Six Bowls and all that. So Dan Mullen, he did some great things. He just fell off a cliff. Like he just. I don't know what happened, but for me, man, just being realistic. I know, I know that Will Levis can take out a lot of momentum. You got to beat them boys. I know Hendon Hooker and that offense got to beat them. Um, you got to beat everybody in the East, and you got to look. At, you know, and when it comes to Georgia, you got to look good. And um, I think if they do that, it'll be fine because ain't no, listen. Let's call it what it is. It's gonna be. It's gonna. It's gonna take a year or two to beat Georgia. Them boys, they got something cooking up there. I'm not saying we can't be competitive because. I don't want to go back to two years ago when we spotted them 14 and beat the hell out of them. Everybody like, oh, we knew you. Oh, of course you knew you were going to. Oh, of course you did. With Kyle Pitts in, not even playing the second half. But anyway, I just think that if they beat Texas A&M, because they, the, they got the number one recruiting class this year, uh, beat LSU, beat everybody in the East, look competitive, you know, against, uh, against Georgia, I think that's a very, very successful year. Because, fellas, y'all know just like I know. Florida has to look. Florida has to look good and stay relevant. You want them to win it. You want them to win it all. But Florida can't be going those having those six wins, bro. That's not like make making a bowl game is what Missouri's trying to do. They trying to get the six wins, right? We can't be we can't be having we can't be going back and forth with Florida State because we won six and they won five. That's not that's not it. That's not it. So they look they go up to Kyle Field and win. They beat LSU. Um, they be safe in the second in the east. I think that's a before before we really start this thing get to turn it. I think that's a great season. And hey, man, if they want to supersede expectations and just win it all, hell, I I'll take that too. I will, I will take that. So Ben, uh, as a captain, you see senior year. Um, were you naturally more of a leader, or did that just um something you had to uh you 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 were you know your whole time there? No, man, uh, I was a great teammate. Okay. Um, I don't, I don't, I don't, I don't know if I ever was a leader because I wasn't a point the finger guy. I didn't make a lot of excuses. I did everything through a unselfishness because through like my team, like, man, if it was up to me, I mean, let's call it what it is, man. I'm not a selfish football player, but I'm, I'm, I'm selfish mentally. So I did everything out of a team mentality. Like dude, I used to be tired. I used to have teammates ask me, Ben, do you ever get tired of hell? Yeah. But it just, <laughs> but I'm not doing it for me. Right. Like if I get tired, that's the play they're gonna throw me to rock. If I don't, if I miss that block, that's the difference. So, and when I became a captain, it was humbling, man. Cause I, ain't, I'm not. Listen, I'm not. I'm not out here, you know, uh, 
taking the taking the offensive lineman to all you can eat. So they I ain't buddy, I ain't buddy. <laughs> I, I, I ain't doing none of that, man. I ain't rubbing elbows with nobody. Um, listen, I'm great to be around. I'm great to play with. I'm gonna do what I'm supposed to do. I'm not gonna bring any negative attention to myself, my family, and my team. And man, if what I did rubbed off on the rest of the squad, hey man, I appreciate them boys because I just enjoy playing, man. Like at the end of the day, I met with the best players, best coaches, best college, best facilities. Hell, I'm just benefiting from the. I can't. I wasn't really blocking nobody. I'm sitting beside Max Stark. He's blocking me and his defender, my defender. So the least I can do is go out there and try to make some plays, but. Being a captain is forever, fellas, and being a captain is a reflection of how you're, how people like view you. That that's that's all your teammates. So certain leaders they yell and scream, and certainly lead by example. Man, I'm the only leader that was willing to follow somebody else, bro. I, I'll follow anybody on that squad just because you're the captain. Don't mean captain is the ones that the team think of. You think of a team like if I say Kansas City, you're gonna say oh Patrick Mahomes, Travis Kelly. It's stuff like that. You become like the face. But, I mean, I just enjoy playing tight end. I appreciate that C. Uh, but, like, every other game, hey, Troop, you got to go out there with the corn talk. Every game. Oh, my God. Because, I, because I, you know, I'm like, I'm I'm, do, I'm the dude out there when my shoes ain't tied. I'm like, hurry up. Come on, man. Because I, I got to use the bathroom, bro. Let's go. Like, I, I, I ain't tripping. I, and I appreciate that stuff. But most guys, they need that stuff to, like, validate who they are. Man, you pretty much just stayed in your lane. Yeah, 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 yeah. I mean, okay. yeah, when they told me I was a captain, I, I told my team, man, I appreciate because that means that coach been talking to guys individually. We didn't do no vote. It ain't like, hey, man, vote yeah. for the He's talking to guys individually. So how you get voted by the defense, they ask the offense. Hey, man, who you like on defense? They ask the defense who they like on offense. That's how you become a captain. And our, um, our practice fields are called the proven grounds. They call them the proven grounds. So you got to prove yourself Monday through Friday to go to make it to the show on Saturday. So, hey, man, I just made sure I did my part. You know, like, sure. no more, no less. You know, Coach Loxley, Coach Larry Fedora and all those guys, I, I appreciate them pulling something out of me. But, yeah, man, I mean, when they go back through 2003, old Max and Shannon and them boys and Gus and them <laughs> boys, Key one, you know, just had a little fun, man, had a little fun. All right. Hey, last one for you, man. Hey, so high school, college, and NFL. Which one you miss most and why? Uh wow. <laughs> we got two on. I, I miss I miss um I miss I miss college. I miss college uh um the most because that's the first time I really had friends. Like it's like like I wasn't that I, so it was a different experience for me, man. Like you know, Gus Scott and Carlos Perez and Ron, and Ron, Ronald Dowdy and Daryl Lee. We used to call ourselves the Fab Five and it was the first time that my talent level was was secondary to who I was as a person. Like people just like me, you know. So my talent don't have to be my disguise. But um, hey, man, college is the best, man, because it's so it's a different kind of feeling. Now, trust me, I appreciate them checks I got in the NFL. Make no mistake, about it. I appreciate them. <laughs> but the NFL is a business. Like NFL is cutthroat. College, man, it's. Dude, I know your family for real. Like I know, I know your your mama, that your brother, that your sister, and it's not, it's not fake. Like I genuinely know your people. I know where you come from. I know what you like, dislike. I know who you dating, favorite food. You know, it's like NFL. Like I enjoyed it because I had Aaron Kenny, man. Aaron Kenny was that dude, man. Took me on his wing as you know he was. My whole career belongs to him in the NFL. But college, man, bro, I ain't nothing like running out in the swamp, man. Oh my god, if I could bottle that feeling up. Cause you know, you know, you go out there first with the kickers and the long slappers and the, and the specialty guys. We out there, you know, catching passes. And they go to O line, D line, and you go back in hand clapping. You know, and then they, they run out and get the stretch, and then we go back in and we get to run out for real. Let me tell you something. My senior year, I was disrespectful. So you know, Florida, we run <laughs> to the left. If y'all, if y'all, if they let y'all go back to 2003, you see us run out. You see one guy go off to the right. That's me. I'm not running to the other guy's side. I'm just going off to the right. I'm, the refs told Ron, look, we're going to throw 84 out the game. I don't know what he over there doing. I used to love it, man. It was, it was, ain't nothing like, and I know everybody say that, right? Everybody say ain't nothing like, bruh, there ain't no, I watched in 2002, we we lost to Auburn. We was number one in the country. We lost to Auburn in 2001 because uh, they, they, they beat them by field goal. Here it is, 2002, Ron's up first year. 
<sighs> they got to kick the field goal to win. Now, in 2001, because we, you know, we number one, we ain't taking them that serious, and they beat us. 2002, bro, we need every single win. So, 2001, they called a field goal block team. It's just a field goal block team. Just them. 2002, field goal block team. Whole team in there. Huddle up around the field goal block team. Hey, bro, we finna block this kick, right? 2002, when they snapped it, you could hear a pin drop. Nobody's saying a word. 90,000, they're not saying a word. Here goes the snap. Kick goes up. Block. Bobby McCray. And it, it was crazy. Go on to overtime. Beat them. That's Jason Campbell. That's Ronnie Brown. That's that's Cadillac. They was stacked. We beat them. So, hey, man, college is, college is the only place, man, that when I go back and see my former teammates, man, we hugging each other. Our ladies got to be like, you would even act like this with me. And like we hugging <laughs> each other, picking each other. It's the because we because we we knew each other when we had no hair on our face, no yep. no kids, no Ain't money. Nothing to speak of. Listen, back when twenty dollars at Walmart, boy, let me tell y'all something. We used to go up in there with twenty dollars, rubbing our hands together like I'm about to fill up a whole buggy. Watch I remember this. them days. I remember <laughs> them days very well. <laughs> Listen, or, or or back when you had to go home, you go home in the off season for 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 the weekend, and you got to sneak back into your dorm room because your little your little nosy roommates like, hey man, what you got in that bag? I ain't got nothing, bro. I can <laughs> see your mama that made you some of that lasagna. I'm ah. telling you, man, it was. Listen, you put stuff in your refrigerator at your own risk. It will develop legs. I am my senior year. We we I lived in an apartment complex and we didn't lock our doors. We can't do that kind of stuff now. I'm it's I come from the club, I'm sitting on my couch, and my door open up. And it's my homie D Lee. I'm tired. I'm looking right at him. You know how you sleep, but you can see I can see what's going on. He walks in, he goes to my refrigerator. I had a I had it was my birthday, I got a cake. I saw I saw him slicing like this. I'm like, oh, he gonna get a slice. I wake up this morning. I look at my refrigerator. No, I got a slice. He took the whole cake. He took the whole cake. Yes. I said it. So listen, I go out my house. I got a, like a white beater with ketchup stains on it, some and some shorts. I go to his house. I walk in his room. He got the cake eating like this. Like, oh, true. What's up? And when I try to grab it, he goes like this. I said, dude, we gonna fight, bro. I'm gonna fight you. Like, bro, I, I had to buy that, that cake cost $10, bro. I ain't got no money. Like, so that's what I remember the most about my time in Florida, man. It was the games. I appreciate them, the players. But it's the moments that y'all weren't privy to, man. It's the moments that, you know what I'm saying, we freshmen and we go to a party and somebody go, hey, man, we all dressed up, G'd up. True freshman. They said, man, how's the water? That's, and Gerard Warren say, the freshman going to let y'all know. Hey, man, y'all boys get in that water. Let us know how the water is. They, take off our they go, no, 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 no. Get in the water. What? I'm not, man, I just got this shirt from get in the water. So look, we look at each other, and we like, hey, bro, we, I guess we got, we, listen, like this, jumping in the water. Shoes, cell phone, in the water. Right? We get in the water, right? Gerard Warren says, man, y'all ain't got no home training. Get out that water with them clothes on. What? I'm just, hey, we, that, that's, that's, hey, bro. Hey, we had fun though, man. We, I, some memories, man. Memories for life. And one Family. day, my, my goal, my, one of my goals is to be able to interview as many of them boys as possible. Like to sit them down, chop it up with them. Cause if the class of 2G, the class of 2000, we never lost to Georgia. Never lost to Kentucky. Nope. Never lost, live, never lost to South Carolina. Never, um, uh, and we, we lost to Tennessee twice. So when people say, man, what'd you do? Hey, bro, won the SEC, never lost to them boys from Athens, almost lost to them boys from Kentucky, went three and one against them boys from LSU, went three and one against them boys from Auburn, lost to Ole Miss twice. You know, just those are the memories I have, man. Eli, man, and all that stuff. But, yes, it's always going to be college, bro, because college, them boys, that that's they got genuine love for each other. NFL, it's fake. I, I, I hate to say it, but it is fake, fake for that, that – Guys walk around talking about buying uh, entertainment centers cost a hundred thousand dollars. I said, your entertainment center costs what? Costs a hundred thousand dollars for a TV and some speakers. I'm from Swainsboro, bro. I can get my one of my homeboys to fly up here on a crop duster, and if I give him a hundred thousand dollars, he can build me a house, man. Please. No doubt. <laughs> I know the guys you're talking about. <laughs> one more question, Ben. We gonna get you out of here. I had. A couple of people asked me, they said, man, you got to ask Troop about this. And I said, all right. The huddle, man, 
you made that stuff fashionable. You was you was out there huddling people, and now everybody does it. Is Ben Troop the innovator of, of the huddle today? Uh, I, I, I don't want to give myself that much credit, but I will say this. <laughs> it's, all, it's, it's all instincts, man. Like, I'm a tall guy, so I'm usually going up against guys that are a little bit smaller than me. You know? So a lot of times when I'm hurdling, I'm, they're looking down. So they're, they're getting ready to look down to try to hit me with their shoulder. So a lot of times you notice, right? This is how you know they're not looking at me. Because when I jump over, they do this and they look back. They, I mean, I, the most famous player I've ever dove over, jumped over, was Champ Bailey. My rookie year, we played the Broncos on Christmas Day. They threw me a little shallow cross. We're trying to get in the field goal range right before the half. Throw me a little shallow cross. And I know he's going to try to, he's going to try to cut me. So I'm running, 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 running. And what I do is, y'all can't see this. I'm it looks, I try to start running a little bit lower, like I'm finna try to like run through him. So he get lower. Him. Got a baby. To to <laughs> and, and mind you, I never I've never gotten caught. Cause this is the thing, fellas. I mean, I didn't have kids then, thank God. Cause if I ever got, got, got caught, it wouldn't have been no, it wouldn't have been no offspring coming from me. That that's a that's a rap. Plus, it's all instinctual stuff, like the old miss stuff, the Tennessee stuff. It's I run into those guys when playing them in the league. They be like, "Dude, why you do me like that?" I said, "Dude, I said I, I, I got." I said, "Listen, I said I got one rule. Like what? Don't blink. If I see your eyes do this, and I said, listen, I said when you close your eyes, I said, listen, you want to think about it? You don't ever got to worry about getting hurt. Why? Because you ain't gonna touch me. You ain't gonna. It's like I'm not even there. I would turn into the hollow man. Now Zook didn't like it, but." Zook said, as long as you never get caught, I ain't got a problem with it. Like, as long as nobody – I didn't do it in practice and stuff. It ain't like, I'm going to say, hey, man, I'm going to catch a pass. I want you to get – I ain't practicing. It's, it's all this. It happened. Football happened this fast. It happened that fast. So the whole old Miss thing, when I jumped over the dude and I got hit, he spun me. And then kind of OJ and um, uh, Kevin Kai came through. I ran into the guy. Like, I got a picture of the, of the, the linebacker. He's on the ground looking up at me. I saw him before. <laughs> And he says, I hate you. He says, why? He said, because that's forever. People ask me about that play. That's getting posted. Time I say, hey, man, I mean, our, uh, Anthony Richardson jumped over somebody this year, and they, and they did like a side-by-side -side of me and him. Mm -hmm. I said, hey, man, that boy there, that, 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 that's a different type he's of animal. a special right kind of man. That's a, that's a special kind of, you know, if, I, if I'm in college, when he's in college, and I go up to a female, I'm going to say, hey, yo, Anthony, what? Take your shirt off so she know how we look with our shirt off. That's how I look. I look like that. My shirt off. <laughs> No, nah, man, I, I, I enjoyed. I enjoyed every. They used to call me the leaping lizard and all this. Stuff. I enjoyed every bit of it, man, because, like I said, man, I used. To, I was in the NFL. Guys coming to me to my man. How you do that? What you mean? You, did you? People saw a line. You was a hurdler. Uh, that would be a no. Like her, like have to run. Like Grant Holloway. Yeah. No, no, I'm not running. I'm not. I'm not running just for the sake of running. That's called soccer. I'm not doing that. Yeah. <laughs> Well, Ben, man, we sure do appreciate you being on the show with us, man, and all all the time you've spent with us. Um, tell the people where they can catch Ben Troop. Man, I always go to um at Pigskin Radio. Um, myself, Kevin Thomas, BJ Bennett. Uh, follow you know uh you know the eighty four reasons podcast is it's a podcast for uh strictly for former and current student athletes at the University of Florida. So you're not going to see nobody on there that doesn't have ties to Florida whether it's former players, former coaches, current players, current coaches. And uh man, at being true 84 on all social media platforms, man, make sure and go to beingtrue84.com. My book Uncommon Unfinished is still available. Um and other than that, man, hopefully it's something about me, man, to make you want to be you. Don't want to be don't be me, be you. Hopefully it's something about me to say, man, being is here, I'm me everywhere I'm at. And my mama can't stand it. She tell me I'm too much of me. I said, well, well, stop. You gave me, you gave birth to me, woman. You got to deal with it. This is who I am. <laughs> and I'm a country boy, man, doing big city things, man. I think most often the times I represent something bigger than myself. I never had to go to college and do all these things. So the least, listen, y'all doing me the favor, man. Y'all make a man, y'all make a cat like me, man, feel good. Y'all reaching out to me, having patience with me. I appreciate it. I'm, I'm, I'm not anti-athlete. I'm just not your normal athlete. I ain't. I don't, I don't need the glitz and the glamour. I'm easy going, man. Your sweet tea and shade tree is going to be me for life, man. So I yes, appreciate sir. that. You know what yeah. I'm saying? I appreciate these people giving me these airways to come on here. Thank God I didn't make up a word because I will make up a word in a second. <laughs> That's what I do. But hey, fellas, man, I got to say this to y'all. Y'all keep doing what y'all doing. Y'all have no clue how much it does for the people that see y'all that want to be y'all. Because everybody... 
and y'all get to say, hey, man, I love it. Hey, man, respect our decision. That's a hell of a name. Of a, that is a hell of a name of a podcast, by the way. <laughs> so, hey, I appreciate, appreciate you guys. You. I appreciate you guys. But that's the hardest part. People say, why 84 reasons? I say, because, man, I wore 84, man. While, while, while other people make excuses, I just got reasons. Don't, I told a like guy on a, I told the guy on another show, he asked me why the name, I, he's told me, asked me about the name, and I said, man, the name's the hardest thing to come up with. Yeah, yeah that's, you're that's, stuck that's with it. Hardest, that's your brand. I had to do it on the spot. I, I had to do it on the spot. They was like, hey, man, what you going to call it? I said, 84 reasons. It was like, okay, what's going to be your tagline? I'm like, oh, God. So I, I'm not going to pay nobody to give me a tagline. So I put, hey, man, no games, no gimmicks, just reasons. Not my reasons, your reasons. Like, so that's, yeah. and, then, and what it does is it's me. I got to say stuff. Listen, I got to remember these passwords. That's my, my passwords always. <laughs> my, kid, I, my kid, listen, we've gone to the, we've gone to the, we've gone to the freaking bank one time or to the mall. My kids, I took my ATM card because they know my freaking code like that. I know what your code is. I said, well, just take the money out. Don't look at the money. That, don't look at the money that's in the account. That ain't got nothing to do with you. <laughs> Man, we appreciate you so much. Thanks for all the kind words, and thanks for coming on, man. We're going to talk a little recruiting after you get out of here and pump these boys up because it's good things on the horizons. Appreciate you. Thank you, man. man. I didn't get a chance to thank you, but thank you, man. We really appreciate it. Appreciate it, man. Appreciate it. Appreciate it. And thanks. go Braves. I love the hat. <laughs> that was awesome, man. So glad to have been on. That we being said, man, we got a lot still to talk about. We had a great, great, great um, last we? weekend recruiting, man. We got to we got to chop it up on some recruiting now. We had a good weekend. We had a, we had a pretty pretty <laughs> good allegedly weekend. allegedly allegedly. I think we got to get down to some business, man. That's all I got to say about it. We got let's we got go. Some we let's got go. some business to get to. So, guys, last Saturday we opened up a great weekend. We're getting Kelby Collins in the fold. Composite really? number 70 defensive lineman out of Alabama. We swooped right into Nick Saban's backyard and took some of his goodies. Nah. Took some of his nah. goodies right out from under him. I don't think, you know, Alabama fans weren't too happy about it. What y'all think about Mr. Collins, Mike? I think it was a great pickup. I mean, we touched on him um, We touched on last, well, last week in, in depth in terms of a – player and true effect of that commit would be but end of the day it once the commit actually hit it and profound effect on the program and uh you know especially if he's at a huge position of need and um once again you know i give it to coach uh give it to coach uh, spencer and he's right now number 70 in overall and on a composite once again, from Gard uh, Gardensdale, Alabama, and make no mistake about it, like like you said, he was wanted by Bama. Wes, yeah, um, just echoing what Mike just said about Collins. I mean, the kid is phenomenal. I mean, top one hundred athlete uh, coming in. We we need him. We need, like Mike said, a position of need uh, to to go head up with with Saban and say. And it's not like I, I'm, people are. He wasn't a take for Alabama. He was a take – like, they wanted this kid. Um, so, uh, to get Collins on board and what was phenomenal by the staff, uh, phenomenal by Spencer. Uh, we'll dig into Spencer a little bit later, but um, that, that dude was, was huge. That was huge. Um, to start the weekend off, to, to get that kid on um, Saturday was, was great. And it gets some momentum going as well. So, I mean, once again, these – you know, we – at the moment um, – you know, go back to Jaden Robinson, you know, starting the week weekend, you know, like I said, even if it was expected, you know, it just, it, it got the national uh, media talking about us, got us in the headlines and, you know, which we'll talk about later. Yeah. It started there and it, it didn't stop. It just, it just kept going. And, um, and, and sorry, Irish, real quick, once again, another top 100 recruit that puts absolutely. you in that upper tier. And then, you know, I mean, out of nowhere, this one come dropped on us. Will Norman went ahead and committed to us. I mean, um, we weren't really expecting it. CJ, when he was on the show with us for our uh, Friday night recap, he had kind of alluded to that Will Norman might um, be urged to move up his commitment date as, as things started to fill up. But he went ahead and jumped in as well. Wes, got anything on you? What you want to say about Mr. Norman? Yeah, Will Norman ranked uh, 143 in the composite, 247 from IMG. 
uh, position of need. He's going to probably have to grow, get a little bit bigger to play that tackle position. That's one of the – we got a lot of edge guys, uh, strong defensive inside uh, to get him to, to, to fortify that middle. Uh, we got a lot of D linemen, so I don't know. Like you said, uh, Connor came on and, and talked to us about that, uh, that he might move it up, and I think that was part of the reason because uh, that D line class is getting really, 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 really expanded. Um, so uh, I guess he saw that as well. And uh, good job again for. Um, I think that's another D lineman. I think that was Spencer again. So um, good get to get him to commit a little bit earlier. So appreciate. I didn't that, pay Spencer. attention to the position. I just looked at the composite at the time. But yeah. Mike, what you think about Norman? Well, there was um there was smoke that this could happen. Um, I didn't think so. Um, it would be. I thought he was. You know, I, I wanted to play it safe, but um, I woke up from a nap at 11 p.m. on Saturday. Yeah, I was up late that night, and uh, and yeah, I was like, I had to refresh it, make go with the profile, make sure it's real, and sure enough, I'm like, oh wow, okay, I'll take it. So it's definitely the shock of the weekend. I was talking about Kelby Collins. Um, you know, got the, you know, called football world kind of talking about us. This put us right in the headlines. I think uh, Josh, you know, um, uh, was it jo- Josh Pay? You know, that's I think he actually scheduled a show right, right, uh, right then, because that, once again, like uh, you said, Wes, that's an IMG kid. He's fr- originally from uh, Camden, New Jersey. He's at a school up in um, Connecticut, actually. But he, he's also a former basketball player. What's great about that? I, I, of course, he's an athlete. You know that size. You know, help with footwork. It's gonna ha- help with hand-eye coordination. So once again, at a posi- position of need. And what that also does, which we've been talking about previously, that's gonna make people. That's gonna push others to commit. Because once again, when you're filling up a spot, spots are filling up. Okay, and that's in my opinion, getting Collins on board, getting these kids on board. I think that pressure. You know, McLeod. You know, McLeod like Florida, but guess what? I think um, McLeod may have liked this, but I think having McLeod as a possible option probably did. Make Norman say, "Hey, man, we got spot. You want it or not? Because uh, people want it." Absolutely, but 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 we were done, and we we knew it was coming on a uh, Sunday that Cameron James was going to be making his decision. And what do you know? The good guys grabbed another one right there. Um, Cameron James. A vastly underrated prospect in my eyes, and and make no mistake about it, ladies and gentlemen, Kirby Smart wanted Cameron James. So not only did we snatch one from from Uncle Nick this weekend, but we went and snatched one from the sucker, Kirby Smart, <laughs> as well. Mike, talk a little bit about Cameron James. Absolutely. So that's, you know, with the second stuff in the locker of the weekend, that's two top – Two tier one programs, bottom line in terms of recruiting, that uh, Billy um, Billy Napier just took care of business on. Now, in Cameron James, what I think really helped us out on this one, we were the first one, his first major offer. So that's a great job by the staff and the Army to really, eva- in terms of evaluation, which we, we've, we've spoken about throughout this show. You need to trust their evaluations because it went done early. Kids appreciate that, Okay. So if you get a kid that's, you know, in terms of in terms of this, I mean, on three has him ranked, I want to say, like, top 30. So, I mean, the rankings are a little bit all, all over the place, but I foresee him as a top 100 player. This kid's his potential is astronomical. So he's relatively new to the game still. He's, a, he's also a former basketball player. So with that being said, I mean, this and, – and once again, it's, on, it's a position of need, and as we all know, the SEC is chinch warfare. Wes? Yeah, Cameron James, uh, he committed on Sunday, uh, ranked 188 in the composite from Orlando, Florida, 6'6", 265, big kid. Uh, to you, you guys already alluded to it. Uh, the, the kid uh, is underrated, in my opinion. I think playing this season, I think he's going to raise one of those, like uh, how we feel about Andy Jean, that uh, will probably rise uh, a little bit better, a little bit more uh, once uh, he plays this season. Uh, the kid is a phenomenal athlete. I mean, if you look at, I'm going to say <laughs> in South Carolina, we call it Huddy, but if I, oh, if you look on Huddle and you, you check the kid's film out, the kid is phenomenal. So uh, whether you check Huddy or Huddle, it's the same thing. Uh, the kid does look good there. Um, another D lineman. This is getting to be a trend now. 
uh, 3D laminating one weekend. So yeah, uh, three, shout, shout. 3D laminating in one weekend. That's I'll have to check my notes and see. You know if what? The, if um, that's the position. Mike, Mike, I think I think the people well, are, are ready ready to ready to hear you um say something feet, about Coach feet Spencer. to the fire. All right, but, but well before that. Like I said, I just want to say once again um, uh, before we move on past Cameron James, that's it. One, one, t- uh, another one. He's from Florida. He's from Central Florida, right next to Gainesville. But overall, Billy Napier, Napier and his staff are putting tentacles throughout the state. So we are just taking over. Now, continue. So, Sorry. Hold, hold, hold. You, so you know where you know where he's from and all that, but you you don't remember what position he played. No, um, he knows. You know, he knows, but uh, but that's fine. I have, to check, fine. I have to check my notes. I have to check my notes. The the, the people the people demand justice. Phone. The people demand justice, and and oh, it, it's time for it's time for Mike to to stand up and be a man and and give Coach his his props. Can I have a drink of water first? No, no, you've had plenty of time. Nah, nah. The crow is best served warm. <laughs> All right. Well, once I, I have said already, I'm a man of my word. I said I, I need at least two top 250 kids, even though I still need, need a nose who's still on the board. Coach Sean Spencer is now Coach Chaos. And, 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 I might add, I am on record. I wanted to be wrong. I'm happy to be wrong. You did now say I, that. I, I, hey, listen, I'm, I'm, I'm I'm glad to be proven wrong, but guess what? Bateman got us. Still, he still got oh, us, baby. Oh my goodness! This he, guy. Hey, Bateman still got us. Oh, hey, just a hey, friendly reminder. That's all I'm saying. But no, honestly, all jokes aside, I'm I'm ecstatic to be wrong. He's now proven to be worth worth his money. So I mean, hey, and we and we still group, have a lot of recruits this on the board. Isn't done. This exactly. group is not done. We're there pretty some... much. We're heavy taking, duty prospects uh, out there left that we are we are square in the middle for exactly. Hers was that suffice for you? I just want to know before I before I, before I'm, go. I'm I'm here for the people, Wes. I'm I'm not here for I myself. I don't think I don't think the people are satisfied because uh, what do you want to hear? What do they want I to mean, hear, Wes? I they want to hear that if you look into the entire country right now, Coach Spencer is ranked sixth in the entire country. As okay. far as recruiting, I know we What's go to two four seven for a lot of for a lot of recruiters. I mean, for a lot of the recruiting rankings, our coaches rank six in the country. That to me, that's phenomenal. Back when I was telling Mike a couple episodes ago, there's a lot of meat on the bone. There's a lot of meat. On, yes, we whiffed on uh, LeBlanc and we missed on Walker, but there was still a lot. The board was still full, unlike the old line that Mike uh, t- likes to take up for and, and development of the old line that we might have to flip guys. Spencer didn't have that because he had a lot of guys that still he could get. And this weekend just proved that. Then there's other guys that like uh Hurst was just coming that just Hurst just pointed out some five stars that are still out there that might move him, not just our class, but move Coach Spencer from that sixth spot that he's in right now. That I mean, this is just I mean, the fans want more, Mike. I mean, you you gotta you gotta give the fans more than that, man. I mean, the fans sitting here, you you was you was on Spencer. We he got to do better, and I, I I threw the Michael Parsons and the, and the Bar, Saquon Barkers out there. They 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 need something, Mike. Come on, get get a man this dude. You calling them chaos? And I mean, if y'all y'all gonna follow us on YouTube, if y'all could see Mike's face when he had to call him chaos just now, it was priceless. So go to YouTube, fans, and, and, and watch this on YouTube. Even if you listen to the podcast and see Mike's face. Shameless plug. Yes, yes, shameless plug. Shameless plug, Y'all, Y'all have to see his face. (laughs) Go ahead, Mike. All right. Hey, I'll tell you what. (laughs) Wes, as as everyone knows, he's a hype man. All right. (laughs) What? How about this? I think this is a fair comp. I'm a a man of the people. You know, I can, you know, I can uh, come down. All right. The hype, the hype, uh, chaos up. What is his current haul? Gavin Hill, 261 overall. At the end, you got Edge, Isaiah Nixon, 205 overall. You got uh, D Lyman, or D Tackle, better yet, Kelby Collins, 70 overall. D Tackle, Will Norman, 143 overall. D Lyman, TJ Searcy, 159 overall. Once again, definitely all within the Southeast or, you know, so I mean, 
that's a fun, that's an elite haul where once again it's a lot of meat on the bone. So hey, I, like I'm happy to be wrong. I thoroughly am. He's proven his money. You said his ranking in 24/7, and hey, I have not. I have nothing to complain about. I didn't fire the man. I, however, I said I want to be proven. I Connor talked me off the ledge. You know, I, I didn't go into time. Even immediately, I called him chaos on Twitter. Immediately. Now the question is, I, as well, we have to ask ourselves seriously. All, all jokes aside, is this group complete? The answer is no. We don't have a nose. We have. We don't a have a true nose. Not not a three four type. No, nose not, it's not man. even. I mean, you could. Norman and, and, and Norman I, has has a lot of work to do. To correct, you know, I, I, I mean, so there's no doubt about line, that. There are true noses out there. We don't have one. Am I saying he cannot get one? No, I just want him to earn his stripes. When you're I, one of the, he's making more money. Than Corey Raymond, you tell me who who the better position coach is. Corey Raymond. Corey Raymond is the second best position coach in the country behind Brian Hartline. Therefore, if you're making a million dollars, okay, earn your work. At that time, when I have said this, he was not making his word. Guess what? Now he is. Therefore, I'm happy with it's not even more us. I don't even no, no, I don't need a no, I don't no. need a blue chip. I just need an actual nose that we can develop. And if that's I, too much to ask, hold on one second. If that's too much to ask, hey, Gator Nation, boy, hey, where's your standard? Seriously, because we need a nose. You need a complete haul. And right now, unless you unless we get a transfer, but guess what? That's not good enough. Period. There's there's no cap on the signing. We have no cap on the D line signing. So guess what? Take your recruiting prowess and go get a nose tackle. That's it's not hard to do. Period. Before, before her, before I'm gonna let her go on. After I say this, the people just want the same energy for the old line because when you say oh. there's. The, before you say they have to, they have to flip guys and all this other stuff for the old line. When when he still has not only meat on the bone as far as these five stars I'm talking about, but when, when Hurst goes on, we talk about Hall of McDonald that we still have guys out there we can get. And as far as his salary, he is the co D defensive coordinator, so that ties into his salary as well. It's not just about recruiting his position; he also so, man, has other. You're jobs right. So, pull from Duke, but but end of the day, I don't care about that. That's not my problem. So. With that being said, now that Coach Chaos is is officially Coach Chaos again in in our eyes as a unit, who is the Heat on coaching wise now? The Mike, who, I'll the give person. it. I'll give it to you. Okay. What coach needs to step up and show if they if obviously uh you know they don't have nicknames. We don't have any other coaches with nicknames, but who needs to earn their stripes, so to speak? Danielle Bateman. Is, is Bateman below the offensive line coaches right now? Absolutely. Minute? Absolutely. Okay. Hear me out. I mean, I, okay. I, mean, I don't do yeah. I, do I, I mean, I, I, I can reiterate what I just stated, what I stated last week. If anyone forgot, hey, turn, turn the pot on again. Long story short, they developed three, two and three stars in the day two picks. Oh, we have a first team All American on our team. Hey, who developed them? Oh, need an answer? Our current O line coaches. Fun fact: Next year, they're com- they're coming from G five. Period. So they're coming from G five. Don't have established ties. Therefore, you need to get them. Listen, if, uh, and by the way, there is there is still meat on the bone, such as a Monroe Freeling out of South Carolina. Okay, so that's just one. So with that being said, next year we have, as once again I reiterated last week, we don't. It's, it's not a position to need in terms of depth. We got a full five bodies, five, six, seven, eight bodies ready to go to start next year. Period. And we're not losing all five old linemen. So it's not a dire straight in terms of like I don't know the nose tackle that we don't currently don't have. But we can keep going in depth because I can continue to prove my point. Because you're not Wes. I took the I'll take it now happily. But you just brought a point that you lost on two weeks in a row. We can make it three next week. There it is. We can make it three. But I mean, that's just how it is. I don't, what what point did I? You brought the online coach on? in terms of proving himself. We spoke about this. Absolutely. We, we spoke about the online. Go ahead. Okay. Once again, though. Early on, I said the G five coaches. You have to establish relationships. Okay. You're, 
I will give them a one year pass there because they've already proven I can develop a three star, two star. Okay. So they, cool. so they have it seen? Have it seen. Yeah. Listen, John. That, that's what the fans hear when you say that. I'm just telling you what the fans hear. Who, who John? Who John Havisi put out recently? John Havisi. Oh, now you being what, disrespectful. When, when Havisi Havisi came, that was thing. He developed these guys at Mississippi State. He did this. He did that. Mississippi State O line was fine. To to, to me, name hey, name with, name two draft picks real quick because I, I know I'm, you can. I'm, no, no, I'm, hey. I'm, no, you're I'm, fine. Dude, I'm, 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 I'm saying what I the fans think when, you, when, when they hear that. The, the the point is when you when you talk about the O line and you talk about the linebackers. We just he just flipped somebody uh, a couple weeks ago. Bateman did. Um, we haven't jumped into the class for next year, but he just got the number one linebacker in the country for the twenty four class. So that's already in the bag for him. So when you talk about Bateman versus the offensive line, Bateman is doing his thing as far as he just flipped somebody. He, he missed those. I don't want to say he's doing his thing. Let, let, me, let, me, let, me, let me walk that back. Let me backpedal quick. No, he's not he's doing his thing. It. But who got the last recruit? Was it the O-line or the linebacker coach? He's All got right, two, right. and they haven't got any. He's gotten two guys. Maybe one is in the 24 class and one is in the 23 class since they've gotten anybody. And they don't have – you say Marone Freeland, and that's somebody we, we need to talk about, but he's not trending towards us at this time. So we have to – Look at that as a totality of what he's going to do. You look at the O line and say these guys not coming. I don't know. I mean, Garage is gone. Kingsley probably is gone. Ethan White is gone. Torrance is gone. So all you have is Michael Togon might come back at right tackle. That's you got to replace the whole O line. So I don't know, Mike. You, you think the whole line might not be gone, but that's four out of five positions that you're going to have to replace next year. And you're talking about Spencer, the number six recruit, uh, recruiting coach in the country. Don't even throw him in that in that conversation because he's missing the nose tackle. Please don't do that. I'm sorry, Spence. Don't do that to Coach Chaos. All right. You gave me a three-part answer, so I'll, I can easily attack all three. Now, one, once again, is this a group complete? No. Is it elite? Yes. They can be mutually exclusive. If you think his group's complete without a nose tackle. You do not know football. That's no offense to anybody, but like, I'm sorry, I know his tackles need to play football, period. Okay. Now, second, now in terms of the O line, okay, say hypothetically you lose four out of five starters. I don't think Ethan White leaves, by the way, but that's that's just me. Okay, you can replace it. You have tackle depth. You you brought in the Juco player, Cameron Waiters, is, is playing very well as a monster upside, by the way. Check the free some practice notes, but um, you got TJ Slaughter um, at potential at center. Uh, you have Richie uh, um, Richie Leonard potential center guard. Josh Brown at guard. So that's three guys right there. That's your interior, and then uh, you have, say you put Tarkin on the left side, and, and, and I just think you have two tackle options. That's five guys, and that's not even mentioning the one from Jacksonville. Um, help me out, um, Hirsch. Um, he decommit from Minnesota, but bottom line, I just named I just named your offensive line. Okay, and that's not accounting a potential of uh, uh, freshman. That's your offense line next year. And uh, hey, will it be great? No. Will it be good enough? Absolutely. And that's not even counting potential transfers. But, but sounds like you and those and those are all upper upper classmen as well. But but it sounds like to me that you're trying to put the, the pressure on what Turner failed to do. You're trying to put that on Coach Chaos. Like if he gets uh, a nose tackle, whether it's uh, uh, Hall or McDonald, that they should come in and start next year. That's not that wasn't his fault. That wasn't that, that. You can't put that on chaos because he, if, even if he gets a nose tackle this year, you can't say, "Well, this guy should come in and start next year and, and be efficient." That, that that's not fair to chaos. That's that to me. You 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 name these guys that have been in the program before. Uh, uh, the two offensive line staple and Sale got there. That's not fair to chaos to say, "Okay, he doesn't have a nose tackle yet, and it's only August, and he doesn't have a nose tackle tackle yet to play next year." That's not. I mean, to, you, you're having two different arguments when you, you're projecting the offensive line for next year, uh, an experienced offensive line that hasn't played a down yet and thinking that it's going to go out there and be uh, one is five. To me, that's uh, I, I don't see that argument. One, I understand. Uh, just to close it out, um, yeah, I, don't, I understand where you're coming from. It is an experience, but they're all upperclassmen, so it's definitely something to keep in mind because he wasn't touched on. Lastly, I'm, I'm fully aware his class is not done. I'm just saying it needs a nose. I don't care if it's early signing day. He needs to know. That's the bottom line. So the good um, news is the good news is we can all agree on 
we got plenty of time to, to take care of the rest of these needs. Oh, and one last thing about Bateman. If he, I don't need an elite kid. Just get me a top 250 blue chipper. And they're, I'll be they're, That's all. they're still working on uh, – There's some kids out there. Lewis Carter, working on the kid on Lewis Carter that went to Oklahoma. That was yeah. that came out this week that they are still adamantly working on him. And this is smoke about some others. So I mean, yeah. like I said, you don't have to have an elite kid. I hope, I hope it works out. You know, we got Finley, we got we got Graham. So hey, let's keep it going. Hey, but like you said, our weekend, as good as it was, it, it didn't end. You know, I mean, we we had one more. Uh, proverbial bullet in the chamber so to speak and i know the hype man is is pretty excited about this this was one of his uh one of the kids he was really hoping was going to go ahead and jump on in and start this 24 class off and what wes is our resident pod piper of the 2024 (laughs) class so we're gonna let him speak on uh miles graham and his what his commitment means to the start of the 24 class yeah, I'm big on the 24 class. Uh, I think the whole general idea of everything switching uh, from with NIL and everything uh, being different, that everybody's looking at the second class as being the bump class, I think there's a lot of, to learn. And like I always told people back in the earlier podcast, uh, that Napier has a process. Uh, he's always evolving, always adapting. And I always had my eye on that 24 class being the class uh, that people would think this class would be as far as the bump class. Uh, so we got Miles Graham. Uh, he's a legacy kid. Uh, I said he was the number one linebacker, but he's actually the number two linebacker uh, from out of Atlanta, Georgia. Um, last month, he told, uh, shout out to Corey Bender. He told uh, Corey Bender from Gators Online about the staff. He said they prioritize me at linebacker uh, position. They love the way I play. Coach Napier and I talk on the phone all the time. Uh, they, pri- they prioritize me a lot and make me feel special every time I come here. So. Uh, that was uh, a quote from him uh, by Corey Bender. Uh, that kid is uh, committed to playing the 2024 on, under All American game, Under Armour All American game, excuse me. Uh, again, I uh, said he's a legacy. His father is Ernest Graham. And this uh, class has a chance to be phenomenal, starting with him. He's already out recruiting. Uh, I saw where he uh, asked the fans, hey, give me five guys that you guys want me to recruit. And I'm going to name some guys uh, off the top of my head right quick. Uh, the first one is uh, DJ Lagway. I mean, we all want that kid. Uh, he's ranked 17 in the composite. Uh, you have cornerback Desmond Ricks. If he doesn't reclassify to me, he's one that we are trending for. He's ranked two in the composite. Uh, wide receiver Jeremiah Smith, uh, he's 10 in the composite. He was at Friday Night Lights, and I, uh, Connor was on. And he was saying how uh, that kid shut it down early because he was just uh, above and beyond uh, the best kid out there. Uh, then you got a running back, Drake Gibson. He was uh, he's 80 in the composite. He was uh, committed to us before with the last stab. Uh, we are right there for him as well. And then you have uh, edge rusher Elijah Rushing, uh, another guy that I have on my radar. He's also uh, a legacy kid. He's 16 in the composite, and his brother is actually. Uh, with us as well. So he's a Florida. His brother's a Florida getter. His dad played. He's out of Arizona. Uh, so we are, those are kids that I feel like we have uh, a connection with that we, that they have been talking to us a lot for that 2024 class. And all those guys are in, ridiculously in the top 20 uh, of the composite. So uh, I'm not saying we're going to get all of them, but those are guys that you want to keep your eyes on if you like me and look into that 24 class. So, uh, I just send it back to you, Hershey. You and Mike. Absolutely. Like like we said, Wes Wes is gonna be our uh <laughs> twenty-four guy for right now until we, we really get you know full on this class and move on to the next class. Wes, Wes is gonna keep us updated on 2024 and keep y'all uh in the know on some of the names we need to keep in mind. So guys, with that being said, we're at twenty commits. I mean it's it's we're, we're getting there now. Rumors are we could take 27, 28, but spots are filling fast. We're moving on down the road. And now it's time to look at who could be next. And, I mean, it goes back to one we've talked about before, and, and it, if rumors are true, DeJon Johnson could be in sooner than later. Corey Raymond, I just I, – I wouldn't bet against him. Mike? Yeah, Dijon Johnson. Uh, okay. Thanks. Yeah, definitely. Uh, fingers crossed and hoping soon. 
Uh, what's great about him, 93 overall in composite, once again, from the state of Florida out of Tampa. And my, my personal favorite part of the uh, state of Florida. But also, once again, it's like Kelly Collins, another top 100 player. That is how you get uh, top elite talent in your class. Those are the players that will take you over the top when you ball games. And also, this is <laughs> if we get him, in my opinion, win, uh, that all jumped Miami in the 247 rankings, going us from currently 10 into number nine. So, who would have thought? Who would have thought just a month ago? Wes, anything <laughs> you want to anything you want to say on Dijon before we move on to some other people? No, nah, you guys touched on it. Uh, let's get that done. Like I always say, the longer it takes, the more worried I get. Hopefully, we don't have to worry much longer. It also came out today, um, for those that didn't see it, that he will be at the Utah game as an unofficial visit. So yeah. I, I, I kind of trend towards he's going to be there as a commit, recruiting with us. Um, like I said, there are rumors that, that, that – he could be in the house as soon as tomorrow. He had a story at SI today, right? Yeah, and he was also on the um, – also a, a plug for Connor and his group at the Varsity Podcast. They interviewed him today. Please go check that out for our for our buddy Connor there and his podcast. Um, so, with that being said, uh, today also we, we mentioned Xavier McLeod. He committed to USC Junior this evening, but – have to be, believe that in that case, Will Norman took his spot and that, that he he was, um I don't want to say his services were no longer needed, but his services were no longer needed or required. <laughs> yeah. Mike? Yeah, I was actually in there. It's like, I'll say that. I'll take the heat. <laughs> I, get, I get most of the heat anyways. No, um yeah, he wasn't a take, bottom line. Um, I usually joke on Ron about that, but no, he legit wasn't a take. Uh, he weighed himself out. But that goes back to just what I was saying uh, with John Walker. Yes, and by the way, it's, it's not hit on you know chaos. But no, it's that's why I wanted these kids. When these you get your, the kids you want, they spots fill up. It pushes kids up. Like say now, Jordan Hall, Caden McDonald, Caden McDonald. Guess what? You bought like they want to not only join your group, but like hey, I was thinking about Florida, but that that speeds up their process. And that's how you get. That's how you get kids. I think someone like and 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 I may be wrong about this, but I have heard that someone like Jordan Hall was probably a plus one, no matter when he wants to commit. That they think that highly of that kid. But yes, well. a Caden McDonald, a Caden McDonald is definitely. Hey, if if you want a spot, you better get on the bus because the bus is leaving. <laughs> I love that kid. Yeah, he's, watch he's, this a, he's a monster. Huddle. Yeah, watch that huddle. And he plays in, in good competition, in, in the highest competition in Georgia. So he's he's tested. I mean, he's got good film out there. And what position um, does he play? Uh, nose. That'd be nose tackle. And he's a true nose. He's a true Ooh. big boy nose. Hopefully with a, the ability to play more than 25 plays a game. Um, That's, you're giving him too much credit. And, and, of course, the biggest news that came out yesterday was uh, Keon Keeley decommitting from Ohio State. And we know the hype man, that's his pick to click, is Keon Keeley. Now, everybody might not be so – we might not all believe what Wes believes, but we don't all have to, thank God, because Wes, Wes, your boy, uh, what's going to happen, man? Tell us what's going to happen. Listen, fans, you have to start – stop having that – that attitude that we can't get guys. That's that's gone. I know you some of you guys have PTSD. I told you a long time ago, if you go back to the first, second episode. First episode, Keely. pick the click. Keely was my guy. Now I know, you know, you see the reports, Bama saving these. We just stole somebody from Saber's backyard. This kid grew up a Gators fan. That used to be the kiss of death. But from other reports. His mom, I believe, came out and said they're going to visit some schools in Florida. Where are we located? We located in Florida, so uh, I, I plan to see him there at a couple games. And when he gets around Coach Chaos, I mean the the closer that he is, I mean we just saw the trifecta that he pulled this weekend, man. You know what I'm saying? Um, that trifecta, I mean, you get 
a McDonald or a Hall and you get Keely, I mean, he's at six, I said. This guy might be the number one recruit in the country. Um, that's, you know. No, no, no. Uh, he, 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 he may be Simmer in down. your mind, but. Uh, you talking about the Heartland? You I'm talking about. Heartland? Oh, you're talking about recruiter. Number one recruiter. Yeah, recruiter. I apologize. Yeah, recruiter, recruiter. Yeah, because like, Keely's like third in the country, isn't he? Was, six. Was Keely six, six in the country. So you got a top six guy there. You got Hall at 123, and you got McDonald 294. I think McDonald will rise a little bit too. I mean, to compare it to that old line class, I mean, we would SEC, you got to have trenches. So, you know, uh, hopefully uh, our line coaches can, you know, talk to Coach Chaos and see what he's doing over there to get these guys in here. So, I, I, I really want Keely though. Um, if I have my picks, I, and I don't want to go off to off script, but that I'm going to ask you guys this question. Uh, Quay Rasal and James Smith, or do you, would you prefer, prefer Keeley and McDonald or Hall? The other two kids are in Alabama. The, those are the two five stars from Alabama. That's Quay Rasal and James Smith. Or would you rather have Keeley and McDonald or Slash Hall? You want to take the? You want to take it, Her, uh, Hirsch? Go ahead, Mike. I'll close it out, and then we'll 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 slide. All right. Um, I'm going to take uh, Keeley and McDonald. A um, couple of reasons why. McDonald, once again, he's a natural nose. Um, he plays big boy ball in Georgia. The numbers are utterly ridiculous. He's I'm going re- to reiterate, he's a natural <laughs> nose, and you cannot teach that and what that can do to a defense when you literally have to double – the zero, the one shade, however you want to put them. Okay. And then moving on to Keeley. All I know is like, I, I'll just use an example. Um, I had a buddy. He goes, Hey, I made the mistake of checking out Keeley's huddle. <laughs> <laughs> so it's, like, he's like, Keeley's that dude. So yeah, I mean, he's- not to mention where Keeley's from. One, the state of Florida. Two, the most talent rich. Area in the state of Florida, Tampa, and we're, we're, we're hey once again Napier's gonna make that our honey hole. It already is, but it, it, we're just gonna put and it up. Let's ride. All right, I'm gonna agree with Mike 100. percent Hey McDonald, I can't, I can't. My heart won't let me go against the Georgia boy. Then I know who he <laughs> plays against. I, I I've I used to live up there. I used to go to these these games. I know who he plays against. And if you prove it at that level of yes, Georgia, man. you can play ball. And that's all that is to it. Anybody that leads their team and tackles from the nose position is a filthy, filthy he's football he's player. You guys, you guys got to check that film out. I'm serious. I, I've I've seen it. <laughs> not sure. I'm, I'm talking to the fans. Oh, oh yeah, the, the fans. fans, the fans, the yes. fans. I want them to uh, see McDonald. What, what McDonald see. is a real deal and yeah. drastically underranked. But yeah. we can say that all we want. It doesn't matter. Keeley, everything Mike said is is right. Plus, we have no history of getting a kid at that school, and that would be a, that would be something we would. It would be as Big as getting a kid from IMG almost and breaking that proverbial curse, you know. So if we could make that happen, that, that's wins all around. I, you know, we, we got our guy out of Bama. I don't think the kids are leaving Bama anyway. If I, I mean, it's just – I just don't think those two kids are leaving Bama. They, they say they want to play together. Yes, I know that don't usually happen. But in this particular case, with Bama offering both – you have to imagine that if they even have any, you know, choice in that matter, they're going to they're going to take Bama. So, that being said, guys, Billy Napier, Billy Napier told us in his first press conference, Billy Napier walked on the stage and said, "Guys, you're not always going to like what I do and how I do it, but be patient with me." And we made our first show a little over a month ago, and we said, guys, yeah, we only have eight, nine commits at the time. We'll have to go back and listen and remember how many we had at the time. It wasn't many. We were way down there. 
And we said, guys, give this staff a chance. Be patient. Let these guys do their job. This man knows what he's doing. And here we are. Top 10 in recruiting. Quite a bit of the needs fulfilled with plenty of time to get the rest of them. I mean, I'll, I'll say my piece on I think the offensive line, I think they need to they need to kick their heels into, you know, get going, but it can be done. But this staff and the buzz around this team right now is hot as any team in the country, maybe outside of Alabama, given what they've done in the last month or so. So there it is, guys. I mean, Wes, Mike, Mike, what do you got to say? What do you think? What What did we tell him? Trust them. Yeah, I mean, end of the day, like you can't get mad at some. If the board's there, you can't get mad. Like I'm only mad at Bateman because the board's gone. <laughs> it's like I was open on chaos, like chaos, because the board was still there. Okay, period. Now I hear, I see that here, Wes. But the bottom line, like. We've said this throughout, be patient, okay? No one's ever patient. People fire Kerry Colbert. Guess what? Kerry Colbert's room's done, okay? Right now, we may, you may look and, at a plus And plus the number one. 11 recruiter in the country. It's ridiculous. So be patient, okay? He, look what he – people forget where he – look where he, University of, Lu, Lu, of Louisiana, the, race, the Cajuns, look where they finished. Look where they finished last year. They're top 20. They're better than us. All right, hate to break it to you. All right, so with that being said, let's go down a couple points. You're still – look where we're at right now. So we're number nine in the country right now. There's still plenty of meat on the bone with, like, Pemba, for example, uh, Ke- uh, Keeley, like we just went over. So also, one thing, we're spreading out. You got to look at the strategy of this, all right? A lot of people – hey, a lot of people need to apologize to Billy, apologize to uh, – I apologize to I do apologize to Spencer. Uh, chaos, you know, fair. Um, what's it called? Billy, like I said, Katie. It's like I said, you got to be patient. Let it ride. It's like it, it was still in the off season. You know, football games for high school hadn't been played. But my main thing is with the strategy, most teams right now are slowing down, if not just kaput, and they're just focused on game one. Guess what? We're looking at a very eminent commit. And possibly one early in the season, which is a giant one. Okay. Now, Wes, I don't know if you want uh, how you feel about that, or if you kind of want to touch what's occurred in terms of the timing since Friday Night Lights. But I mean, what Billy Napier has done, and with the, and got to remember what we're, what season we're coming off of. It was deplorable. People are like, "Ah, oh, you got blown out against South Carolina." I was like, "Ha ha." I'm in Miami and Winwood. I don't care. I don't mind watching the game. I saw players quit and coaches quit. Uh, if you're not, if you guys don't care, I don't care. You're not wasting my Saturday. So Wes, I mean, what do you think about that? I mean, you, you I mean you, you hit it. I mean, I, we, we told Billy said it, and we reiterated early in the podcast, uh, in our podcast history. Coach said, "Be patient." I've spoken about why I love him so much, as far as a thinker. Uh, to me, he has. Uh, Unlike our previous coaches, he has a, a feel for our fan base, too. So he knows when to do things, when to create the moment, when to, hey, don't do it yet. Give it a couple of days. I want you to do it here. So uh, I, I love our coach for that. Um, we got Jakeem Jackson since then, uh, Aiden Mazel, uh, Jordan Castell, Andy Jean, Jay Robinson, Kev Collins, Will Norman, Cameron James. I mean, the blue drip, trip ratio is at 90% right now. I mean, that is stupid. And the fact that we have 18 of 20 of these kids, I mean, excuse me, 17 of these kids are from the state of Florida, like Mike was talking about as far as uh, the proximity and what we're doing and how we're keeping that talent here. Uh, we didn't see that in the past. Um, and that's just a shout out to the, the staff. That's a shout out to Billy Nipper and his crew, not just his uh, the, the, the on-field coaches, but the support staff, like you mentioned, Katie and Bree and all those uh, that, that work behind it. You see a lot of the kids mentioning these uh, staff members' name, Jamar Chaney. All these guys are doing their part, and then they're and then I look for big things uh, to continue. Like we all keep reiterating, a lot of meat still on the bone. So I don't think we're just going to stop at ten. I'm I'm one of those fans. You, uh, I'm one of those guys that you're going to figure out by listening to me. I'm a little bit more optimistic than most. 
uh, just because I, you gotta have, you gotta believe, uh, and we can't have that that mindset that you can't do it. So that's where I'm at. Let me let me close this out by saying something. <laughs> and Mike Mike, inter, you know, alluded to this. This previous staff, Dan Mullen being the main culprit, and I don't want to <laughs> keep harping on Mullen because those days are over. But it kind of plays into this. The previous staff destroyed relationships across the state of Florida. Absolutely just destroyed them. I mean, and just... Billy could not have inherited almost a rougher situation to come into. I mean, of of course he could have. There could always be something worse. But given that this is the University of Florida, we should recruit top 10, top five every single year. To walk into what he walked into, build the relationships he's rebuilt, and then have almost every recruit within a 500-mile radius of the front door of the campus. It's just unbelievable to me. I mean, the man absolutely did everything he said he was going to do so far. So if you have any doubts left about Billy Napier, especially as a recruiter, it's probably time to pocket those. So with that being said, guys, um, you know, we're going to hit on a few things from the scrimmage real quick before we get out of here. We're not going to make it too much longer because this has been a jam-packed episode. Um, but recruiting is in good hands with Billy Napier, and that's all that we need to say at this point. And, and chaos. Uh, and chaos. And Bateman has us. Oh, I had to throw Mike's statement out the window there just to give him a little bit Bateman to think got about. Us. Bateman, hashtag Bateman got us. Um, so that being said, we're just going to hit on a few. We, you know, we had a scrimmage this last Saturday, and we just want to hit on, on a few of the hot points real quick before we get out of here. For those that may not have seen them, or been, you know, had access to to where they may have been available. Um, Wes, you want to hit us with some of those hot points on the scrimmage? Yeah, um, I know we were talking about Bron in at guard, but uh, uh, in the scrimmage we saw a lot of Richard Leonard uh, at guard. Uh, Ethan White was out with the undisclosed injury. Um, O-line from left to right was Garage, Leonard, Kingsley, Torrance, and uh, Tarquan. I hope I'm pronouncing his last name <laughs> correctly, but uh, the offense had a lot of struggles on the day. Uh, we were struggling to get some receivers open from uh, everything that was reported. A lot of uh, this is uh, what was reported. Uh, we need Ricky back out there, uh, but I would rather I, him uh, take his time before getting back on the field. I Go will ahead. say, I will just interrupt and interject for one second that I will I heard from multiple people that that was more of how great the defensive backfield played than it had, you know, to do with the receivers for, for you know, cool, cool. to ease some people's minds. Yeah. Uh, a name that uh, that has been popping up at receiver, though, uh, is Dejan Reynolds, uh, not only from the scrimmage, but for some practice reports as well, that uh, he's been looking uh, very, very good. Um, all the backs continue to excel and look very, very good. Uh, they're running the ball hard. Even our freshman ETN, uh, he's uh, if, if he's half as good as his brother was in, in at Clemson as a freshman. Uh, the way he just took off, I'm, I'm gonna we're gonna love that kid. Um, the D line is, just continues to impress. I don't even want to name everybody because I feel like our D line is is sick, and that's another shout out to Coach Chaos. Whatever he's doing as far as technique, uh, he's earning that 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 salary. Um, both Jordan Young and Kamara Wilcoxon both had interceptions from uh, the scrimmage as well. Uh, Jason Marshall is still out. Uh, he's in the pit with the uh, the hamstring. Uh, so Abraham was out there with uh, Devin Moore and Rashad Torrance and uh, Trey Dean uh, were both the safeties. Uh, and that's just a little recap of what happened in the scrimmage if you, did, if you guys didn't hear. Yeah, and let me just add to that real quick. Um, Kamari Wilson also has, has done really well in recent – weeks we've talked about him guys I, I continue to reiterate to you this staff is n for those that have the ptsd of the last staff the best 11 kids are going to be on the ball field it's not going to be 
we're not going to – the gone are the days of the guy that's been on campus for four years as the starter because he's been on campus for four years. Um, they're going to rotate these young kids. Yes, Shamar James as well. Yeah, yeah. They're going to rotate these kids in. These kids are going to play, and these kids are going to get valuable year one experience and be contributors. So I have a lot of faith in this staff to, to run fresh bodies out there and just keep this team healthy and fresh. So, with that being said, guys, we also just wanted to touch on real fast that, you know, Gator Nation got even better this week again, not just because of recruiting, but because of the opening of the of the new facilities. And, the, the, you know, if you haven't had a chance yet, you need to go check out some of the videos and the pictures of the Hebner Center. I don't know, you know, just I just can't say enough things about an $85 million center, and, and it just – it's everything we thought it would be and more. Um, Mike, any thoughts on the on the facilities? Uh, I got a couple, actually. I appreciate that. Um, right now, it's, it's definitely best in the state. A lot, a lot of people like to use that as an art, you know, uh, base for an argument. So, I mean, that's not debatable. Um, that is it the best in the country? I mean, you put it with the numbers, absolutely. So, I mean, with construction. People are talking. With, People are talking. So, I mean, <laughs> it's $85 million. So, I mean, I think Nebraska is coming out with one. It's, it's a lot. It's some stupid money. Will it be better? Probably, because it's the greatest and latest. But guess what? Who's, we at least put $85 million. Right now, we're the best. So, I'm going to capitalize on that. It'd be the nicest building in all of Nebraska. So, yeah. <laughs> They have buildings or barns. Sorry, I'm sorry, I didn't say that out loud. But, oh my uh, goodness! Yeah, sorry. Bottom line, a couple of questions I wanted to ask you guys was, and I'll have my input as well. The impact this is going to have on recruiting, and also for the current players. I know Vince Charles Miller. I'm paraphrasing. Is like, hey, I'm just ecstatic essentially because they promised me this, and he's a he's a six year senior. <laughs> so um, I'm, he's a post, I'm yeah, to, he's on Josh Hammond territory. <laughs> yeah, I'm on I, I, Rick Wells forever and ever, right? So I'm honestly, I truly am happy for him. But, the, you know, how it's going to affect those current players, is, you know, it's going to seriously, it will make them better players. You know, those, it's, it's one, it's going to make them more comfortable. It's going to allow them just, what that has on the effect of a player just throughout the week, you know, a lot of times, you know, they, knowing where they can come somewhere, they can just relax, take naps, like your sleep schedules. A lot of people don't understand the effects, like their, their schedules throughout, like, you, you, it's a 12 hour day. Like, that's what Justin Shorter was alluding to. Like, you're up at 5 5 30 for, for film it's just to start your day. You're back, you're done, seven, eight o'clock. All right. You still have homework. You guys still have, how to, you have study hall. So, like, uh, something like this, when you can just take care of everything, is huge. Not to mention on the recruiting thing. Hey, we have the latest new toy. Hey, we still have Gator Collective. Hey, NIL, uh, Billy Napier and his army, looks like we're doing all right. So we are doing all right before this. Well, I think we're going to do okay after. Wes, anything to add? Yeah, um, it, it will help in recruiting because we have the right type of coach. Um, to have – I'm glad he – like you were talking about uh, Miller. I mean, this – facility went through three coaches uh McElwain kind of started and Munchev had some ideas and then you have uh Billy who put his finishing touches on it of, of what he wanted at the end I mean a, a lot of it was probably already started which was it was in good hands it's 85 million so it's a state of the art so uh to have Billy come now I mean his timing was perfect for this uh when you have uh uh the facility is not the be all the end all but to have the type of coach that we have that's going to build those things, that's just another thing, an asset that he has in his back pocket. Now that's going to make him the the, the guy that I believe and we believe and Gator Nation believes that he will be. So uh, shout out to those uh, who had a hand in uh, creating that for the players. You saw a lot of them uh, thanking the guys, uh, well not the guys and gals who had a part uh, in building that million dollar facility. So uh, you all. Uh, for that for the players because i mean they loved it and, and they they talked about it a lot so uh shout out to you guys absolutely that was going to be my closing point is um for those that aren't 
necessarily active on social media. That's the happiest I've seen our players in a long, long time. Those kids were were kids on Christmas. They were kids on Christmas morning running through that locker room, pointing at this, pointing at that. Oh, my goodness. Look at this. Look at, you know. And then just swarm to social media to say thank you so much to everyone that was responsible for this, to everyone that made this possible. I mean, from Anthony Richardson, you know, just down the list to to the walk-ons, all of them, just thank you so much for making this happen. It really speaks to the buy-in. People have questioned our administration. They've questioned their commitment to football. Florida football's in good hands. I mean, we're in good hands. And I feel more confident than I have in a very long time that everyone is on the right page. And, um, man, I just can't wait to see. I really just – I'm ready for week one now. I mean, honestly, that's all I can say is let's let's get to week one. It's Let's stay healthy. Let's go kick it off in front of, you know, a full packed stadium, at, you know, at night that's just going to be as loud as I think we've heard in years. Um, it's time, man. It's it's time. It's 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 time to put the product on the field and let's do some business. So, guys, with that being said, man, this has been an absolutely fantastic episode, jam packed. God, we hope y'all enjoy it because we sure did enjoy doing it. I mean, thank you so much again to Ben Troop for coming on, spending the time with us once again. You know, check Ben's podcast out, Eighty Four Reasons. Lots of great interviews with current and former players on there. If you want to know what what your favorite Gators are up to, that's a great place to start. Um, you know, hopefully we got some more recruiting news here going on to talk about next week. But other than that, I mean, Mike, you got anything you want to add before we get out? No, just once again, I want to thank everyone who listens here. It, you have no idea how uh, grateful and humbling it truly is. Also, uh, hey, and uh, – Truly thanks to uh, Benjamin, the Gator legend himself. Um, I, hey, and uh, ch- chop on. And also, last I'm sorry. Bateman and what? And yes, Bateman got us. Bateman got us, baby. Bateman got us. Real quick. I, I, throw I'm, I'm a, I almost got off script. My apologies. Yeah, he almost was off brand. Um, <laughs> real quick before I throw it to West, guys. You know, I say it at the beginning of every episode. Just check us out. Apple Podcasts, Spotify. Our Heart Radio, Google Podcasts, we're on all of them, guys. You know, if, if you don't know, if you ain't found us yet, we'll show you the way. <laughs> and just make sure, you know, if, like I said, if you want to support us as creators, hit us up on Patreon, patreon.com backslash respect our decision. Shout out to our boy Utah Gator, who was our first patron. We appreciate all the support, the love. We got a lot of great content lined up to come for you. A lot of interviews in the clip. We're about to start throwing them out, man. We're only growing upwards and upwards. I mean, we got lots of things and lots of ideas, and we love hearing from y'all. So, once again, leave us a review. And if you don't have time to leave us a review on, on, say, Apple Podcasts, hit our Twitter up, at RespectOurDCN. You can DM us there, or you can just, you know, write under one of our many posts. We, We check everything. So, once again, guys, thank you so much for everything. Ben Troop. Huge shout out to you, brother. Thank you so much. Much love. Wes, send us home. Yeah, guys. Uh, first off, thanks uh, again to Ben for, for coming on and uh, blessing us with uh, his presence and uh, some stories and, and all that. I really appreciate you. Uh, shout out to all the fans. Thank you guys for listening. We appreciate you guys as well. Uh, like her said, give us the feedback. Uh, we appreciate all your feedback. Uh well, Whatever you want to hear, things that you might want to hear in the future, we're going to start doing some things where you guys can uh, ask more questions that we may be able to answer on the podcast, do a couple polls here and there to get you guys response and get some feedback from you guys because we, we do it for you guys and try to give you the, the latest and on what's going on with recruiting and what's going on with the program. So uh, we to do that, we want to know what you guys think. Uh, so we appreciate you guys. And uh, last but not least, a uh, shout out to our veterans. Again, if you know anybody that's a veteran uh, uh, or you're a veteran yourself, uh, hit us up. 
And uh, if you have any questions about trying to get uh, some things uh, done as far as benefits, and we'll help you guys out that way. Uh, as her said, you got the contact for us. If not, hit uh, backspace about 30 seconds and, he, and you can get the information. So thank you guys again. Uh, we're going to go out and go Gators. And thank you guys for listening. That's right. God bless everyone. And as always, you don't got to agree with everything we said, but just respect our decision. <laughs>